Welcome to the complete tutorial on how to follow a ketogenic diet for long-term results. In this video, we're gonna break it all down from beginning to end, whether you are a keto beginner or somebody who has been doing it for years, you're gonna love today's video. In this video, I'm gonna teach you what exactly is the ketogenic diet and how to use it for weight loss. We're gonna cover the best foods to eat on keto versus the worst ones out there, clean keto versus dirty keto. How to prevent things like the ketogenic flu, what exactly is that? I'm gonna reveal my Keto Camp cocktail that I recommend you drink every single day. We'll address some of the other common side effects of keto and how to reverse them if you're dealing with them right now. How much can you eat on keto? What are the calories, what are the macros? We'll explain all that. I'm also gonna share five ways to know if you're in ketosis and then the three methods to actually test and verify with a device. We're gonna debunk myths around keto, cholesterol, and heart disease. What is the correlation there? I'm gonna help you understand that. I'm also gonna share three of my favorite ways to practice keto for rapid weight loss. How to break through a plateau if you hit a stall on keto. I'm gonna give you five ways to bust through that. How to have more energy. And then my favorite part of this entire video the super video on keto is three ways to practice keto flexing, which are principles found from my latest number one best-selling book, Keto Flex. If we're just meeting, nice to meet you. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of four books. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we are on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. And in between each part, of this mega keto video, I'm gonna be answering the top questions from the Keto Camp community in between those videos. But now, it's time to start the video and get into what exactly is the ketogenic diet and how to use it for weight loss. Buckle your seat, let's get right into this. Are you curious about how the ketogenic diet actually works? What are the pros and cons? Well, in this video, I'm gonna break down the principles of the ketogenic diet, how to do it the right way, how to do it the wrong way, and so much more. Let's do this. Hey, Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of three books, founder at Keto Camp, and here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. Let's get right into this. Keto is not a diet. Keto is a metabolic process that has been around since humans have existed. That's right, 2.5 million years. You see, our ancestors, every single one of your ancestors, they were in ketosis. They didn't have the luxury of going on their phone, hitting a button, and having the Uber Eats driver on their door 30 minutes later. You see, they were forced to go into ketosis by their environment, and our body is hardwired this way. So let's talk a little bit about some of the myths out there, because when you go on Dr. Google, or when you speak about keto to a friend or a coworker, they're gonna say, oh, it's just a trend, it's just a fad, it'll go away soon. Well, it's been around for 2.5 million years, I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Keto is not about eating a whole bunch of fat. It's about going low carb enough to teach your body and your cells to choose fat and produce ketones. And I'm gonna break it all down for you. I'm gonna do some cool drawings for you so you can see how it works at the cellular level. But let me just give you a brief history of ketosis. Back in the 1800s, the Romans, they thought individuals who were having seizures, who were convulsing, they thought they were actually possessed by the devil. They thought these individuals had demons inside of them which was causing them to shake and convulse and have these seizures. They didn't know what a seizure was back then. So here's what they did. They would take these individuals, put them into a room, close that door, they don't have food, they don't have water, come back the next day and their seizures would be gone. The demons would be gone. What did they do? Well, they forced them to get into ketosis, which actually is a powerful tool, as we know from research, for seizures, right? Let's talk about Pythagoras now. Pythagoras, who's a famous Greek mathematician, he systematically required his students to fast for 40 days before they could even enter his course and learn from him. Why? Because he knew by day 40, they would be in deep stages of ketosis and they would be at a peak mental state. And we'll talk a little bit about how ketones fuel the brain, but that's a powerful example. The last example here when it comes to the history of keto is back in the 1920s, researchers knew that ketosis is a powerful tool for children with epilepsy. 
and they would use a ketogenic lifestyle for these children to cure their symptoms. That's why keto has been around forever. We know that. Now research is coming out every single month showing the benefits of it, and mainstream media likes to bash it when you do it the wrong way. They're right, it could be a problem, but we're gonna talk about how to do it the right way. Let's understand that ketoacidosis is not the same thing as ketosis. Ketoacidosis is a very serious event where you have significantly high levels of ketones, beta hydroxybutyrate over 15 in the bloodstream. This could be a deadly thing. This is only cause for concern for those who are type one diabetics. You have to closely monitor your numbers so you don't get into ketoacidosis. If you're not type one diabetic, then ketosis is going to be where you're going to fall and you're going to feel great and look great. And the ketoacidosis is completely different than ketosis. I hope you understand that within your body right now, you have the world's greatest healer. You could call this healer a physician. You have access to the world's greatest healer and that is the human body. You see, we are such a magnificent creation. You are a miracle and you are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master. I'm gonna to reveal to you, I'm gonna show you exactly how ketosis works at the cellular level, how it works with your cells, your DNA, your hormones. And if you do it the right way, the way I'm gonna outline it for you, you're gonna achieve extraordinary results. So before I get into my drawing and showing you how to do keto, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done so already and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Okay, let me show you how this works at the cellular level. So this is how keto works at the cellular level. I'm gonna break down this is, it makes sense for you, so I'm taking you back to your biology class, but we're made up of 70 trillion cells in the human body. I said it earlier, you are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master. Every cell has within it your DNA nucleus. It's true, when somebody tells you you cannot change the genes you were born with, they're right. You were dealt those deck of cards, you cannot change it. However, you can change the expression of those genes, which we'll talk about shortly. Inside of your cells, you have the mitochondria, which is the energy power plant of your cells. It's producing ATP, which is the gasoline of your cell. This stands for adenosine triphosphate. We have around your cells this lipid bilayer called the cell membrane. This lipid bilayer is made up of protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. That's right. Your cells, all 70 trillion of your cells are made up of fat. It loves fat, and you're not made up of carbohydrates, by the way, less than 1% of the body is made up of carbs. This is where keto is so powerful because you're literally giving your body and your cells the building blocks it needs to burn fat, to produce energy, to feel good. Now on the cell membrane sit these cell receptor sites. They're also called integral membrane proteins. What we need to understand is the communication process, the orchestra here between the cells, the receptor sites, and your hormones, the nutrients you're eating, and the oxygen that you are breathing. Let's talk about the hormones. We have at least 600 hormones in the body that we know of, and we have our fat burning hormones, our fat storage hormones, we have our longevity hormones, we have our feel good hormones. Hormones are the language of the human body. They are chemical messengers. All they're doing is sending signals to your cells so these receptor sites could pick it up, they hear the message, and it goes into your cells to tell your cells to do the job, which is to burn fat, to produce energy, to feel good. That's the way you were designed. You are magnificent. The nutrients you're eating does the same thing. Goes to these receptor sites, oxygen, same thing. Here's the problem. If you're not doing keto, and you're eating a whole bunch of carbohydrates, or you're doing keto the wrong way, which we'll talk about later, you're now creating cellular membrane inflammation. When you are creating cellular membrane inflammation, now all of a sudden your hormones, they're still, still sending signals to your cells. The nutrients, you can be taking the best supplements in the world, but now these receptor sites, they are blunted, they are blocked. It's like you screaming at me, but I can't hear the message because I am deaf to the message. They are deaf to the hormones, to the nutrients, to your oxygen. When you eat carbohydrates, this is what's happening, or I should say, when you eat too many carbohydrates, when you're burning sugar, the 70 trillion cells in the body could only choose two sources of fuel. Either we're burning sugar in the form of glucose or we're burning fat and producing ketones. That's it. So here's the comparison. When you are a sugar burner, eating high carbohydrates, you're not doing keto, you're eating every two to three hours, that creates a lot of cellular smoke. So I'm gonna compare that to a truck that is speeding through the highway with all the smoke 
coming out of the exhaust pipe. It's not healthy for the environment. Burning sugar is not healthy for your cellular environment. When you apply the principles that I'm about to teach you and do keto the right way, clean keto, and teach your cells to now produce fat, burn fat for fuel, and produce ketones, that's comparable to a Tesla that is cruising through those streets. It is cleaner for the environment. Burning fat is cleaner for your cellular environment. And when you start reducing cellular inflammation, when you do keto the right way, all of a sudden, any symptoms you have, whether it is fatigue, skin issues, weight gain, weight loss resistance, and even diabetes and insulin resistance, this symptom is not the problem. If you're overweight right now, hey, I understand. I'm somebody who was obese for most of my life. I weighed 80 pounds heavier than I do today, but I never had a weight problem. Nobody in the history of this world has a weight problem. It is a weight symptom. That's what Dr. Berg says all the time. We don't lose weight to get healthy. We get healthy to lose weight. How do we get healthy? We do clean keto. We teach ourselves to reduce inflammation. And by default, as a side effect, we lose weight. We have more energy. We live a long, healthy life. So this is how keto works at the cellular level. I hope this makes sense to you. And you understand now that keto is a very powerful way to teach yourselves how to communicate the right way. Before I get into a little bit of some more tips for you, let me know if you are trying keto, have you been doing a ketogenic lifestyle already? How long have you been doing it for? Put the comment down below, I'm curious. And if you're thinking about doing keto, then type down below, I'm thinking about doing keto. Let me know by commenting down below. Also, hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done so already, and also subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when we go live. Look, burning fat, is our primal birthright. When you look at babies, did you know that babies are in and out of ketosis? Because breast milk is made up of saturated fat, protein, and cholesterol, which actually helps the development of that brain because the brain is 80% fat. And the brain is an energy sucker, meaning it's 2% in body weight, but takes about 20% of your total energy needs. So we wanna make sure we're fueling that brain with the right nutrients, which is protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. When you are in the great land of ketosis, it is like a superpower. I do it not for the weight loss because I already went through my transformation. I do it because I feel magnificent. I'm in ketosis right now. I'm mentally sharp. Brain fog goes away. You think clear. You're able to deal with any kind of stressors that come your way. So the list of benefits for ketosis are endless, but there is a caveat, there is a catch. Keto needs to be done the right way. When you go on Dr. Google and get those 100 million results looking for how to do keto the right way, most of the information out there is gonna teach you how to do it wrong. It's gonna teach dirty keto, which actually can increase cell inflammation and you're not gonna feel good. You might be in ketosis, but you're not going to feel good. So I wanna teach you the dirty keto versus clean keto principles. I wanna give you a grocery shopping list. I wanna outline it all for you in the next video. Now let's jump into some questions from part one of this series from the Keto Camp community. First question comes from Michelle Tamayo. Hi Ben, does the keto diet work for the young as well as the older women? For women after 40 or 50 years old, does the keto diet need to be tweaked in order to see the same results in all age groups? Thanks. Well, here's the deal. The older you get, the slower your digestion, typically, the slower your metabolism, typically. However, the principles I've shared in video one and throughout this entire mega video all have one thing in common, and that's reducing inflammation at the cellular level, which could benefit you if you're 21 years old or 91 years old. Everybody is unique. You're gonna go at your own pace. You're not competing against anybody else out there, Michelle, except yourself. Our model here at Keto Camp is to beat yesterday. So the same principles apply for you because the goal here is reducing inflammation. Next question comes from Sonia Rangel. Great stuff as always, thanks. I've been doing keto and alternate day fasting for one year and I've lost 80 pounds. I'll keep eating this way forever. Sonia, that is amazing. You are the perfect example of the body's incredible capability to heal. Remove the interference, do keto, do fasting variations, and the weight comes off as a side effect, right? Because we don't lose weight to get healthy, we get healthy to lose weight. So kudos to you, that is amazing, and congratulations. Next question comes from Carmen. I followed keto lifestyle before and loved it. However, I'm thin already, and I couldn't keep my weight up while in ketosis. I eat a low-carb diet now, but I don't feel as well as I did while I'm in ketosis. Any ideas? Absolutely, Carmen, great question, and kudos to you for following low-carb and keto. 
Now I do keto not necessarily because I want to lose weight, I do it for the anti-inflammatory benefits, what it does for my brain function and clarity. I call it the great land of ketosis. So if you want to put on healthy weight or maintain your weight while doing keto, there's a few things you can do. Number one, we want to make sure we're assimilating the fats on keto. So you're going to learn a little bit later how to do that with bitters and maybe ox bile supplementation. So working on the gut, number one, assimilating those foods. Number two, make sure you're getting quality sleep at least seven hours each night. That helps ramp up growth hormone and it helps your body repair and recover. And then number three would be to lift some heavy weights, whether it's your body weight or you're lifting some dumbbells or kettlebells and put on some lean muscle mass. Those would be the three ways to gain healthy weight on keto or to prevent losing weight on keto. Next question comes from Trish. Trish Champion says, I've been doing keto and carnivore for three and a half years. I've been in a weight loss stall for two of those. Clearly I'm doing something wrong. But with that being said, I'm healthy with the exception of my BMI being stuck at 27. All right, Trish, let's talk about that. BMI, I don't really pay too much attention to that. I would get some body fat percentage done. Make sure you're at a healthy range for women. That's somewhere between 17%, 22% body fat. But also to break a plateau, I'm going to outline a little bit later how to do so. But the general rule is to mix things up, change the keto foods you're eating to different keto foods, or practice what I call keto flexing, where you intentionally get out of ketosis. I'm gonna give you three methods to do so at the end of this mega video. So we wanna mix things up. You're not doing anything wrong. Everything is on the way, not in the way. As long as you don't quit, as long as you don't give up, it's impossible to fail. We just wanna navigate the waters, make adjustments, make corrections, keep your eye on the prize, and you'll get to that goal. We got this, and you'll learn a lot more during the rest of this mega keto video. All right, Laura Rance, my friend Laura, good to see you. I started keto almost two years ago. Been stalled for six months. So I started OMAD, which is one meal a day, and carnivore this week. Hopefully I'm eating enough so I don't go into starvation mode. Any tips for me, Ben? I do, Laura. So we want to make sure we're at least eating one meal to full, and you're doing OMAD. So make sure that meal is substantial. You're getting enough quality protein, and maybe you're taking some digestive enzymes to break that down. I don't like OMAD every single day, so maybe you have two days out of the week where you don't do OMAD, and you have two or three meals. So as long as you are mixing things up and you don't stick with the same routine, you shouldn't go into the starvation mode. And the keto flexing tips I'm gonna share with you later is gonna remind the body not to be in starvation mode and actually ramp up your results. So you'll learn about that a little bit later, Laura. And the last question here before we move on to the next video is from Chef Luhan. Chef Luhan says, please do a video on the paleo diet. I had tried keto so many times but failed because of severe migraine. Please reply. All right, chef. So keto and paleo have a few things in common, but paleo is typically low carb, but not enough low carbs to get you into ketosis. On average, and you learned this a little bit later, we want to keep our total carbs below 50 grams for the day to get into ketosis. Paleo usually allows more than that, which is low carb compared to a standard American diet, but not necessarily low carb. So what can you do? Why were you getting migraines? It could have been a toxicity release. As the body burns fat cells, you do see some toxins get released. So I would recommend a few things, maybe doing a detox protocol when you transition back to keto, increasing your sea salt electrolytes. You can learn more about the importance of that and going low and slow, that might do the trick for you. Okay, we're gonna be answering some more questions in just a second after part two of this 10 part series on the complete guide to keto. This next video is gonna get into what are the exact foods to eat on keto from nuts to oils to fats to proteins and what are the ones we want to avoid. This is gonna make a big difference on your keto journey. Let's get right in to that video. What are the foods that you could eat on the keto diet? It turns out there are a list of dirty keto foods that can actually increase inflammation, slow weight loss, and even cause weight gain. And then there are these clean keto foods that help you blast fat, feel good, and skyrocket your keto results. In this video, we're gonna break it all down. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp, and here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. 
This is actually episode number two of my 10 part series teaching you how to master keto for results that stick. So if you missed the first video, we talked about how keto works at the cellular level. We talked about the history of keto and why keto is not a diet, it's a metabolic process and so much more. Hit the card right here if you wanna watch that video. I do recommend it because it lays the framework for keto. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the clean keto foods versus the dirty keto foods. I encourage you to go grab a pen and paper and when I list the healthy keto foods, the healthy keto sweeteners and the best way to cook those foods, I want you to jot it all down, take it to your grocery store, that's the list of foods that you're going to eat on keto to maximize your results. Before I present to you the worst foods and the best foods, let's talk a little bit about the best and healthiest ways to cook those foods. The best way to cook the foods is the least way to cook foods, meaning we don't wanna overdo it. We don't wanna overcook our food. So the less you could cook a food, the better it's going to be for you because you're gonna mitigate the nutrients from being lost. So raw, lightly steamed, poached, simmered, boiled, lightly grilled but not charred, sous vide, slow cooking and pressure cooking, these are all the best ways to cook your keto foods. Let's talk about the worst. The worst thing to do is to overly cook your keto foods and you're gonna do it with over broiling, barbecuing, burning the meat, blackened meat, charred meat, deep frying and microwaving. It's pretty much going to be dead carcass. It's going to create something called advanced glycation end products when you eat burned keto meats, which is going to actually age you faster, create more inflammation and put a stop to your keto results. So let's stay away from these bad methods and stick with the good methods. Now that we understand how to cook the foods, let's talk about these dirty keto foods. The following foods that I'm gonna to present to you here, if you have any of these keto friendly foods in your kitchen, in your cupboard for yourself or for your kids, it's time to do an audit and remove them. They're gonna create massive amounts of inflammation. It's gonna create weight gain and weight loss resistance and lead to a lot of symptoms. Yes, keep in mind, they're all keto friendly, yet, they are not going to get you the right keto results that we want here. So the worst offenders of them all are going to be the toxic eight, which are these vegetable oils that are everywhere. And before I even share each one of these eight oils, I want you to understand this. I interviewed Professor Brian Peskin, who's an MIT researcher. He was on the Keto Camp podcast and we were talking about these nasty vegetable oils that a lot of people on keto are eating. And I asked him, hey, Professor Peskin, what is worse for you, eating these cooked vegetable oils every single day on keto or smoking a cigarette every single day? And then he looked at the research and he shared that a person who smokes two packs of cigarettes every single day for up to 28 years, their chances of developing lung cancer within those 28 years is about 16%. Then we compared that to somebody who had cooked vegetable oils every single day for about 28 years their chances of developing cancer or heart disease was 86%. Yikes. So look, I'm not advocating cigarette smoking, but I am saying we gotta be really aware of these toxic eight vegetable oils because they're all keto friendly. They might get you in ketosis, but they're not going to get you the results you want. And here at Keto Camp, we focus on health at the cellular level. So grab a pen and paper. These are the ones I want you to look out for in your keto bars, your keto foods, and when you go to restaurants and the grocery store. Canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, and grapeseed oil. Those are the toxic eight right there. Do an audit and remove them right away because here's the deal. Your body cannot use these toxic fat for energy. They actually get stuck on your cell membrane on these receptor sites. Remember in the previous video, I showed you exactly how hormones and nutrients communicate to these receptor sites on your cells. But when you have inflammation, now your fat burning hormones cannot deliver the message and then weight gain and weight loss resistance and other symptoms occur. Well, these oils create more inflammation than any other food in our diet, more than sugar and more than even other foods out there. So, a study showed 132 days of cell membrane inflammation from these rancid fats. Not good, your body cannot use it for energy. At least your body can burn sugar, cannot burn these toxic fats. So I encourage you, I hope this inspires you to remove these fats or to avoid these fats. Okay, now that you understand the fats to avoid these dirty keto foods, let's talk about the healthy, clean keto foods. Write these down, take it to your grocery store, 
make the majority of your meals consist of this and you're going to get fat loss, you're going to feel energetic, and you're going to reduce inflammation and feel like a keto rock star. I love coconuts and coconut oil, avocados, avocado oil, pastured egg yolks are fantastic. It's similar to mother nature's multivitamin, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, delicious. I actually put it in my coffee. I have a video, by the way, on the world's healthiest keto fatty cup of coffee. I outline the exact recipe. I'll put it in the cards right here and a link down below. I also love cacao butter, brain octane oil from Bulletproof. I love extra virgin real olive oil, like my friends over at the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club, they have the best olive oil I've ever tried. I'll put a link down below for a $39 bottle for a buck. MCT oils are great. Let's talk a little bit now about the seeds and nuts and legumes on a keto diet. I love, my favorite ones are gonna be pecans, macadamia nuts, peely nuts, walnuts, sunflower seeds, those are fantastic. Almonds in moderation are great, and pine nuts. What about the proteins? Well, here's my list, my favorite keto proteins. Wild caught fish, like trout and salmon and sardines and flounder, fantastic. Make sure it's wild over farmed. Grass fed and grass finished beef and lamb, delicious, so good for your cells. Remember, don't overcook them. Colostrum, collagen protein, bone broth. If you could get a quality bone broth, like my friends over at Kettle and Fire make one of the best bone broths I ever tried. If you want to get their bone broth for 15% off, go to kettleandfire.com slash ketocamp and use ketocamp at checkout for 15% off. The bone broth is a great way to get some collagen and these specific amino acids that help line the gut and help you assimilate your keto fats even better. I love pastured duck, pastured geese, hemp protein, and marine collagen. These are all fantastic keto, healthy keto approved foods. It's also important to know which keto sweeteners are good for you and which keto sweeteners are going to actually be bad for you. So here are the list of my favorite keto sweeteners. I love erythritol, pure stevia, monk fruit, and non-GMO dextrose. Those are fine. Just make sure it's not leading to more cravings for sugar and carbs and you should be okay. Now my least favorite keto sweeteners, which by the way are found in a lot of keto bars, keto protein shakes, you gotta look at the ingredients here. Here's a list of my non-approved keto sweeteners. Xylitol, maltitol, mannitol, sorbitol, asosafame potassium, sucralose, aspartame, and saccharin. These sweeteners, yes, they're keto friendly, but they're actually going to create gut dysbiosis, which might lead to more inflammation and you not being able to assimilate all the healthy fats you're having on keto, not good. I've seen a lot of people who are not getting results on keto, and then I ask them if they're consuming any of these ingredients, they do an audit, they find out they are, they remove it, boom, they break through a keto plateau. So you're starting off now, and you're gonna understand this right from the start, you're gonna be ahead of the keto curve. My favorite keto beverages are going to be Zevia as a great alternative to soda and diet soda. Zevia is a carbonated flavored soda, but it's sweetened with stevia. So you can find Zevia just about anywhere else. I'll put a link for the one on Amazon. I also like obviously water, high quality water, coffee, organic shade grown coffee, and tea. Those are all great keto approved beverages for you. Now lastly, I wanna share with you a principle, a rule if you will, that if you follow this two, 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 two rule, it's gonna help your body start utilizing your fat stores for fuel and help you become a fat burner away from being a sugar burner. So here's the two, 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 two rule, which was developed by my mentor, Dr. Pampa. Starting out right now, we wanna make sure we're consuming two tablespoons of avocado oil or olive oil, two tablespoons of MCT oil or coconut oil, two tablespoons of grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee, and then two teaspoons of sea salt. Now, the question I get asked all the time is, do you consume this all in one sitting? It sounds like a lot of fat. It's not all in one sitting, it's throughout the day. So think about the oils you're using to cook with, your salad dressings, your dips, that's all included. But you wanna consume that throughout the entire day that's gonna help this transition to teach your body to start utilizing fat and transitioning to burning fat instead of sugar effortlessly. That 2 2 2, two rule will make all the difference for your energy levels and your fat loss. I have a question for you. What was your favorite keto food that I mentioned on this video? Was it the wild caught fish, the beef, the butter, the coconut oil? Which is your favorite keto food 
put it down below, comment down below, let me know. I wanna know what your favorite keto food is. And also, if this video has been helpful, hit the thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button with that little bell so you're notified when we go live. So you might be thinking, why did I include the sea salt in that 2222 rule? It is very crucial to replenish your electrolytes on the ketogenic diet, especially since day one, because it's gonna help prevent things like the keto flu. You might have heard all about the dreaded keto flu. Well, guess what? In the next video, I'm gonna break down how to prevent the keto flu, how to replenish your electrolytes so you don't get brain fog, you don't feel like crap, but instead you feel like a keto rock star. Okay. We just finished up part two. If you're still watching this mega keto video, let me know in the chat box down below. I wanna know who's still with me. Let's take the next top questions in the keto community based off of the previous video you just saw. Barbie G says, what can I put coconut oil on? Great question. I personally like to put coconut oil in my coffee and tea. It's a great way to help produce ketones and turn the brain on. You could also use it as a cooking oil as well, or maybe even some dressings or marinades. Diane Wolfsbauer says, what about pumpkin seeds? Any special kind? Yeah, when it comes, I like pumpkin seeds. That's totally fine. I have it myself. We want to make sure we get them in a sealed bag, organic and raw, make sure they're not roasted and they don't have any other of the uh, table salt, salt in it. And you should be good with the pumpkin seed. Lynn H says, when we do the 2222 rule, which you just learned, can we just do coconut oil instead of switching to olive oil? Yes, that's totally fine. The 2222 rule is giving you some general rules to follow, but if you want to have the coconut oil instead of the olive oil or the avocado oil instead of the olive oil, that's your choice. Any of those fats are healthy, they're stable, so go ahead and it's up to your preference. Next question comes from JMF1002. Hi there, just discovered your videos and I'm loving it so far, so grateful. Uh, can I ask what you think of pure homemade milk kefir? Can one consume this on keto, say a glass a day? Yeah, so thank you for discovering the channel. I'm so grateful for that first and foremost. I think kefir is great. It's a great prebiotic to help with gut diversity. If it's cow kefir, I do recommend if you're new to keto, those first 28 days, we wanna avoid cow dairy. Maybe a coconut kefir would be better, a goat kefir, or even a sheep kefir. I don't even know if they have that, but that would be better options, goat dairy, sheep, or even coconut kefir would be a better alternative. After that, you could throw it back into the mix. I wouldn't have that kefir every single day, just like I wouldn't take the same probiotic every single day. We also wanna mix things up and create more of a diversity in the gut. But after those 28 days, go for it, enjoy it. I'm a big fan of kefir. Jenny Tanner says, we raise our own chicken, but don't see it on the list. Jenny, chicken is approved for sure. I love that you raise your own chicken. Yeah, we wanna make sure it's pasture raised. Chickens that were able to actually free range, be out there in their natural habitat, eating a natural diet, chicken is totally fine unless it is a caged chicken or a chicken that has been pumped full of antibiotics. We wanna avoid that. But it sounds like you're doing it the right way because you're raising your own chicken, so go for it. I love chicken, healthy chicken is fine. Anna Roman wants to know about air frying. I think air frying is a great alternative to frying with oils. So if you're gonna fry, you could use the air fryer, but in general, we, wanna, we don't wanna overcook the food. We wanna limit the frying, whether it's air frying or frying with oils. Out of those two options, number one, frying with oils, or number two, doing an air fryer, I would choose the air fryer. Okay, now take a deep breath. Keto is no joke, it's a powerful tool, but when you use it the right way, your body's going to heal, you're gonna burn fat, you're gonna reduce inflammation. You've made it so far to this video, we still have a ton more to go, and you're really gonna learn more about this amazing ancient healing strategy. Let's move into the third part of this 10-part series, all about the ketogenic flu, what is it, how to prevent it, and other side effects on keto. Let's do this. What is the keto flu, and how do you prevent it? In this video, I'm gonna explain what exactly causes the keto flu, there's two causes, and how to prevent it. And we're gonna talk about why potassium and these other specific electrolytes are crucial on your ketogenic journey. Let's do this. Hey, Keto Camper, hope you're doing incredible today. 
My name is Ben Azadi. I am the best-selling author of three books. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. And in the previous video, we broke down clean keto foods versus dirty keto foods. We also broke down the history of keto on this 10 series video playlist. So if you missed that video, make sure you stick or tap the video here and watch it after this one. I'll also put a link for it down below. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. The keto flu. A lot of people are scared of trying keto because they hear these negative connotations associated with the ketogenic diet. One of them is the keto flu. Look, the keto flu is not fun. When you experience it, it feels like you were hit by a truck. It feels like you were actually sick and it makes you feel worse as opposed to feeling good. We don't want that. Out of the hundreds of members that have gone through my Keto Camp Academy, guess what? Not one of them has experienced the keto flu because when you do it the right way, you could prevent it and feel like a keto rock star. And that's what I'm gonna teach you in this video. You wanna make sure you stick to the end because I have a very powerful bonus tip to replenish your electrolytes every single day. And if you do that, you're gonna feel so good. So what is the keto flu? There's two primary causes for the keto flu. The first one is going cold turkey into keto too fast eliminating all your carbs and saying, I'm all in with keto. That might cause a shift in your body that causes the keto flu. Not good. So it's really carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. That's the fact. The second one is one of the most common ones is an electrolyte deficiency. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. When you are a sugar burner and you are burning glucose as your primary fuel source, your kidneys are gonna hold on to a lot of water weight. This is not good because it's gonna make you feel bloated and look bloated and puffy. We don't want that. Now that you're transitioning into the great land of ketosis, hello, now your body is burning fat and what's gonna happen is your kidneys are gonna release a lot of that excess water weight. This is wonderful because you're going to feel lighter and look lighter, but there is a problem here. Your kidneys also dump a lot of electrolytes. I call this electrolyte dumping. So what we wanna do is be very strategic with replenishing these electrolytes. This is why I created something called the Keto Cocktail that I made and I created for the members of my Keto Camp Academy. I'm gonna give you the recipe right now, so go grab a pen and paper and take notes. I'll wait a second. Okay, so it's every single morning consume the Keto Cocktail. 16 ounces of high quality water, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, the great thing about apple cider vinegar is not only does it help hydrate you, it also could help with fatty liver, it could help alkalinize your body, and there's so many more benefits to it. So two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and then we wanna throw in one teaspoon of cream of tartar. Wait a minute, Ben, I bake with cream of tartar. <laughs> yeah, cream of tartar is fantastic because it has a good amount of potassium, and we're gonna talk a little bit later on the importance of potassium, but we wanna throw in one teaspoon of cream of tartar, and then a pinch or two of high quality salt. I personally use Redmond's Real Salt, and I put a pinch or two in my water with the apple cider vinegar and the cream of tartar. Mix it all together. That is a great way to replenish your electrolytes and minerals on keto. Have that every single day, at least for the first 30 days as you transition into the great land of ketosis. Another little hack for you is I do love high quality electrolyte powders. And a lot of them out there have the wrong sweeteners and wrong artificial things in there. But I did come across one of my favorites, which is from Redmond's. Redmond's makes a great one called Relight. Me and my girlfriend, Natasia, fight over this. She's going through it too fast and I get on her case and she gets on my case because it tastes really good. But here's the deal. It also has 1,000 milligrams of high quality sodium. It has 500 milligrams of potassium. Uh, 1500 milligrams of chloride and over 60 trace minerals. So it tastes delicious and it hydrates you. I do have a special coupon code for you since you're watching this channel. I'll go to the description down below, click the link. The coupon code is Zadi, but I'll put the link for you down below as well. Okay, now I'm gonna get into two very powerful bonus tips. Before I do, I wanna ask you the question of the day. Have you ever heard of the keto flu before? Have you experienced it? And has it stopped you from starting keto because you were scared of experiencing it? Let me know if you ever got the keto flu or it stopped you from starting keto because you were afraid of it. Comment down below. Also, take a second here to hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed to the Keto Camp YouTube channel yet, smash that subscribe button with that bell so you're notified when we release a brand new video. All right, bonus tip number one is going to be eat my top five sources of keto potassium. 
Potassium is one of the most important electrolytes that we need in the human body. We require about 4,700 milligrams of potassium every single day. If you're more active, you need a little bit more. So here are my top five sources of keto potassium. Number one is going to be beet tops. You're thinking, wait a minute, beets are not keto friendly, they're high in sugar. <laughs> I'm not talking about the red beet, I'm talking about the green leaves and the stems that come with the beet. Turns out they're loaded in potassium, this very important electrolyte. So you could chop off the leaves and the stems and put it in your freezer. This is a little tip I got from Dr. Berg. Put it in your freezer and then put it in your keto smoothies and that's a great way to get some extra potassium. So one cup of cooked beet tops has about 1300 milligrams of potassium loaded. Number two on my list is going to be avocado. I love avocados because not only does avocados have two times the amount of bananas, it is also loaded in something called phytosterols. Phytosterols actually helps reduce inflammation in the body. And avocados also have a good amount of vitamin B5, which helps with the adrenal glands, it helps with stress. I love avocados. One whole avocado has about 975 milligrams of potassium, so have one per day. Next on my list is spinach. Now this one is a little tricky because for the first 28 days on keto, the members of my Keto Camp Academy, I advise them to stay away from spinach because it has higher amounts of oxalates, but after your 28 days, have some spinach, and if you lightly steam and saute your spinach, you could break down those oxalates, but one cup of cooked spinach has about 839 milligrams of potassium. Number four is a favorite, have this one to two times per week, and that's going to be wild caught salmon. Wild caught is much preferred over farmed because when you're eating farmed fish, it has high amounts of something called polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs. We know this is a known carcinogen. So we stay away here at Keto Camp, we stay away from farmed fish. Instead, we get wild caught fish. So one eight ounce filet of Salmon, wild caught salmon, has about 839 milligrams of potassium. It has great omega-6, omega-3 fats for you, and let's face it, it is delicious. So have salmon one to two times per week on your ketogenic lifestyle. And number five here on the list is going to be Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts sauteed with olive oil, some garlic, delicious, and some sea salt, oh my gosh. So one and a half cups of cooked Brussels sprouts has a little over 500 milligrams of potassium. I'm gonna put these top five foods in the notes down below if you need a refresher. I do have one more bonus tip here for you. I hope you're getting so much value from this. I'm having so much fun educating on this. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button yet, hit it and subscribe to the channel. The bonus tip here is this. We need actually glucose to help deliver sodium into our cells so we could get that function of the sodium. Sodium is not the bad guy, salt is not the bad guy if it's high quality salt, so we want glucose to help do that. But the problem is that when we're doing keto, we have low amounts of glucose in the bloodstream, which is good. So here's what I do. I have my sea salt. I carry this little sea salt case with me from Redmond's before my workouts, during my workouts and after my workout. So if you're going for a walk, if you're gonna go do a workout, any kind of exercise, have this around your exercise, because when you exercise, it'll raise cortisol in the body and glucose follows and it'll help deliver the salt into your cells. So I just do this, Mm, just like it's like tequila, baby. So have your sea salt around your workouts. That'll be a great way to accelerate your electrolytes getting into your cells. I hope this has been a helpful video. Now the next question to ask is this, how many calories do I eat on keto? What are the specific macros? How do I know if I'm having too many carbs or too much fat? I just made a video for you that's gonna break down all of these questions. I'm gonna answer it for you. It's gonna make so much sense. Okay, let's jump into some questions from the Keto Camp community from the video you just watched. Luke Toe wants to know if apple cider vinegar diluted will dissolve your tooth enamel. I have seen some, some uh, evidence of that happening, anecdotal evidence, I haven't really seen anything concrete. So with that being said, I think it is a good idea to maybe avoid diluted apple cider vinegar and maybe take the capsule version that could always be an option. Personally, I hate the taste of apple cider vinegar. So I take the capsules and I take them from Paleo Valley. We'll drop a link down below for our affiliate link with Paleo Valley and a coupon code we have with them. Naomi Wagner says, thank you so much for this useful tip. I have been drinking a similar cocktail every morning over the past year. 
but I use water, bicarbonate of soda, and lime juice. What is the difference between cream of tartar and bicarbonate of soda? Does it have the same effect? Thanks again for your advice. Great question, Naomi. I love that you have your own little cocktail that you've been drinking for your electrolytes. The difference between cream of tartar and the bicarbonate of soda is that cream of tartar has higher concentration of potassium. Potassium is a very important electrolyte, so it's just a great way to get in some additional electrolytes as you just learned it's so important to do so on keto. That's the difference, higher concentration of potassium. Gary Simone says, Ben, how successful have you found keto for depression? First of all, Gary, I'm sorry you're dealing with that if it is you that is dealing with that or the person that you know. Uh, I have found keto to be a powerful way, one of the many tools to use for mental clarity, depression, and d mental disorders. Now, I do recommend you work with a professional, you work with maybe a counselor or a therapist, but keto, what that can do for your mental clarity, when you're not having these glucose and insulin spikes throughout the day, this roller coaster of glucose, because you're doing keto, you have stable energy, more optimized hormones, and more sensitive hormones, which could only help with your thinking, mental clarity, and potentially with depression. So I hope you're doing better to this day, and I have seen keto help a lot with my Keto Camp Academy members and their mental clarity and helping them overcome a lot of barriers in their life, which are mostly mental barriers. JG says, great content, Ben. I've seen various videos starting that you, if you hit a stall, then reduce your fat intake then we are encouraged to use up our own fat stores. So if I'm not satisfied, I just eat more greens because it looks like the eating lean protein isn't the answer unless it's a flex day. Keep up the great work. Yeah, JG, that's exactly correct. If you're brand new to keto and it's your first 14 to 21 days, I like the abundance of healthy fats. That's why we talked about that 2222 rule. After that, when you're in ketosis and you verified it, we're gonna talk a little bit later how to verify it, then you could scale down the dietary fat and allow your body to get its fat from your butt, your hips, and your thighs. I do like replacing it, yes, the fat with green leafy vegetables, but lean protein could be good as well. Lean protein is terrific. So if you wanna increase the protein, decrease the fat, that would be a great way to lose more body fat. Brooke Johanna says, what age is it too late to not get flabby skin from weight loss on keto? You know, Brooke, the body is incredible. It is really capable of adapting. Loose skin is common after weight loss, but the body adapts over time. I have a video, by the way, on five ways to tighten skin after weight loss. I talk about autophagy, collagen, specific supplements, things you can do. It takes time but it can be done. So I will put that in the card notes here and I'll put a link for it down in the video notes. So after this super video is done, you can watch that video on tightening your skin after keto. The mega video for keto of all time continues. Hey, if you're still here, let me know in the chat box. I'm with you, Ben, and I acknowledge you for still being with me. We have a lot more to go to understand this amazing process. The most powerful tool for your health, getting in ketosis. What are the macros and calories for the ketogenic diet? In this video, I'm going to break it all down for you so you could get amazing results with keto. And at the end here, I'm going to break down nine specific blood markers to request from your doctor to see if keto is working for you. Let's do this. Hey, keto camper. Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. I'm super grateful you chose this video today. It's gonna help you out on your ketogenic journey. In the previous video, in this 10-part series to how to master keto, we talked about how to deal with common symptoms of keto, like the keto flu, brain fog, fatigue. You can watch that video here after this video is done. This video is gonna break down the macros, the calories, the structure for you to get those results you want on keto. And stick around for the end here because I'm gonna give you nine important markers to request from your doctor. Let's get into this right now. When you go on Dr. Google and you type in, what are the macros for the keto diet or what is the keto diet, you'll get over 100 million results. There's gonna be a lot of confusion. The general percentages for your macros is going to be 85% fat, 
meaning 85% of your total calories come from fat, 15% from protein, and about 5% from carbohydrates. Here's the issue with just following those percentages. The body is more sophisticated than just calories in versus calories out, and we're, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that, but here's what I want you to understand. You can get your fat and calories from that ketogenic meal in front of you, or you can get your fat and calories from your body fat. That's right, the goal here is to teach the body to start burning its own body fat. So keto is not about eating a whole bunch of bacon and fat and cheese. It's about going low carb enough so your body can start burning its own body fat and let your liver produce ketones to fuel the brain. It's very important, the first 30 to 60 days on keto to actually increase your protein. When you do this, not only is it going to help preserve any muscle loss, but Protein is unique because it activates these satiety hormones and chemicals. When you eat protein, it activates cholecystokinin, leptin, glucagon-like peptide, and peptide YY. All you need to know, Keto Camper, is that this helps you feel full. This prevents you from snacking. This prevents you from raising insulin in between your meals. That's what we want. So it's very important to get 40 to 50 grams of protein at every keto meal that you eat, especially the first 30 to 60 days. This is the exact way I teach it inside the Keto Camp Academy. So increase the protein, increase the healthy fats, and that's gonna help you feel satiated and full. Some of my favorite protein sources are grass-fed, grass-finished beef, and lamb, pastured eggs, bison, wild-caught fish. I have a whole list for you in a previous video I did in this series. If you stick or tap this screen here, you can watch that video after this video. I will also drop a link down below. But let's talk a little bit about how many calories should you have on keto. Look, the human body is not a bank account, it's not a math equation, it's not a calculator. The human body is a complex chemistry lab and we need to start treating it as such. Do calories matter? Yes. Are they important? No, they are a huge distraction to what really matters. What really matters is cell metabolism and hormones, reducing inflammation. All the tips I'm teaching you in this video and in all the videos on this Keto Camp YouTube channel. Food can upgrade or downgrade your biological software. Every bite determines a signal inside of your body. For example, you could eat a thousand calories of brownies versus a thousand calories of a kale salmon salad. The person who has the thousand calories of brownies, they're going to store fat, they're gonna have a fluctuation in their energy levels, and they're not gonna feel like a rock star. The person who has the same amount of calories, 1,000 from a keto-friendly meal, they're going to burn fat, they're gonna have better energy levels, and they're gonna have hormones that do their job. Same 1,000 calories, completely different response. Calories are a distraction. It's time to develop a relationship with the body where we know we had enough food, let's stop eating. We have mechanisms in place to teach this intuition. There's no receptor sites within the body that counts calories, so we need to stop counting calories. I wanna know, a question of the day, have you ever counted calories? Have you ever been told, and maybe you did it yourself, exercise more, eat less, let's create a caloric deficit. Comment down below, let me know if you've ever tried it and if it ever gave you long-term results. The bottom line is this, we can choose to eat high quality keto friendly foods that will elicit a healthy metabolic response or we can choose to eat poor quality food, dirty keto foods that will elicit a negative metabolic response. The decision and choice is yours. This is why here at Keto Camp, we teach you to not focus on weight loss. Instead, focus on health, focus on reducing inflammation because we do not lose weight to get healthy. We get healthy to lose weight. Dr. Berg says that all the time, and you know what? He's absolutely correct. When you get healthy, when you start eating healthy keto foods and doing it the right way, the weight will come off as a side effect. Your symptom will go away by default, and that's what we're all about here at Keto Camp. We look at health from a cellular lens. So here are some non-scale victories I want you to pay attention to, and then I'm gonna outline these nine markers to request from your doctor. Pay attention to, yes, the number on the scale, you could take that marker on day one, but go seven weeks before you test the number on the scale again, because by the way, the number on the scale should not determine whether something is working for you or not working for you. There could be so many reasons why the number on the scale, your weight will fluctuate up and down. I'll give you a couple reasons. Soreness from a workout, you'll retain water, it might show on the scale. 
Your monthly cycle, if you're a lady, you'll retain water, it might show on the scale. Another reason, a poor night of sleep, you'll have higher levels of cortisol, it might show on the scale. It's going to just lead you to a road of frustration and discouraging results. We're not about that. So yeah, take it on day one, but also pay attention to non-scale victories. Pay attention to how your energy levels are. Are they improving? You no longer have to take a nap in the afternoon? What about your sleep? What about your skin? What about specific measurements like body fat measurements? Take some photos. These are very important markers to have and it's just for you to kind of keep track of your results. And then here's the final thing that I wanna share with you. These are nine important blood markers that I want you to write down, bring it to your doctor, request your doctor have this done for you and track this. If you see improvements in these markers, then the keto diet that you're following is doing you great good. Before I give you these nine items here, I wanna first thank you for watching this video and if you're getting any value from this, take a second here to smash the thumbs up button and if you're brand new to the channel, hit the subscribe button with that bell so you're notified when we release a brand new video. Here are the nine markers. Get a full lipid panel. Lipid means cholesterol, fats. So get total cholesterol, total HDL, total LDL, total triglycerides, but also a test called NMR, which stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. An NMR test is also going to look at not just your total LDL, but what about the particles? Because LDL is split up into large and fluffy particles and small and sticky particles. The large and fluffy are fantastic. They actually clear out plaque in your arteries, but the small and sticky are the ones that get lodged into your artery. So the NMR test is gonna show you exactly which amount of each individual particles that you have. It is a pet peeve of mine when I hear somebody say, oh, my doctor saw my total cholesterol and total LDL was high and he wants to put me on a statin. Look, more people die with heart attacks and heart disease with normal to low cholesterol than high cholesterol. It does not give you the full picture. Looking at the entire scope of your lipids will give you an accurate picture and then also looking at other inflammatory markers. So we want to look at high sensitivity C-reactive protein, fibrinogen, homocysteine. These are oxidative stress. These are inflammatory markers that we want to look at in combination of those cholesterol particles and that will give you a full picture. Get your A1C done, which is your three-month average of your fasting blood sugars. Get your fasting glucose done. You could do it by yourself or you could do it with the doctor. A fasting insulin is also important to get done. And then a full thyroid panel with the antibodies to see if you have autoimmune. So get a full thyroid panel, not just TSH, but all the markers, T3, reverse T3, free T3, T4, free T4, and then those thyroid antibodies. These are markers that are going to give you the best data to let you know if keto is working for you or not. Not the number on the scale, not chasing calories and macros, but chasing health. That's what we're all about here at Keto Camp. The next question I know you're asking is, how do you know if you are in ketosis? Well, there are five signs. These are clear signs that let you know you're in ketosis, you're doing a good job, and then also how to test and look at optimal markers of glucose and ketones. Let's take some more questions from the Keto Camp community from the video we just watched. Nadia M says, hi Ben, how to build muscle specifically on keto? What should your macros be when building muscle on keto? Please answer, P.S. I'm a female and I want to tone up and build lean muscle after losing 60 pounds on keto. Nadia, that is amazing. Congratulations on your 60 pounds. Uh, incredible, extraordinary, and that's testament to your dedication to your health. Now, how do you build lean muscle? Well, the cool thing about ketones, ketones are not only muscle sparing, they could also help you build muscle, especially when you combine it with intermittent fasting because you get the growth hormone. So similar to my response earlier about how to keep your weight on or not lose weight on keto if you wanna maintain your healthy weight, fix the gut, work on assimilating those nutrients, taking some digestive enzymes, making sure that you're maybe practicing fasting to reset the gut, lifting weights, of course you're already doing that because you're toning up, and then your sleep. Make sure your sleep is good, seven hours of quality sleep. That's the way to do it. There's some great interviews on my Keto Camp podcast with Robert Sykes, Dr. Ryan Lowry, that we talk about keto, muscle, and performance, and with Danny Vega. So if you wanna watch those or listen to those, it's on the Keto Camp podcast. The next question comes from Colin Knight. Colin says, what about plant-based protein powders? Is this okay? You know, plant-based protein is very different than animal-based protein. Not all protein 
is created equal because a animal-based protein has all the complete aminos. Plant-based does not. But if you are doing more of a plant-based approach for whatever reason, I respect it. So there are some companies out there that have kind of put it all together to get most of the benefits of animal-based, but animal-based is gonna be the best for you. I like collagen protein powder. Now, Sun Warrior could be a brand that is plant-based, that is the best out of the plant-based world for proteins. I'll drop a link for them down below in the video notes. Carl Williamson says, what if you have an active job and train five times a week? Is it good to up your protein and up the carbs as I find some workouts that I tank? I often do at least 16 hours of fast a day and have done keto and if I've been doing it for two years with great results. However, I'm not feeling as good and I have dips in energy. Carl, great job doing keto for that long. Yeah, upping your protein, maybe having a keto flex day, which I'm gonna teach you about a little bit later where you introduce healthy carbs, could be a game changer for you. If you have a lot of stress in your life and you're doing ketosis and you're doing fasting and you're very active and you're exercising, it could just be too much stress for your adrenals and your body to adapt to. So maybe you wanna do less fasting, maybe you won't wanna start practicing keto flexing. I would start with your sleep, make sure that sleep is optimized, seven hours of quality sleep, and then build from there with the other tips I gave you. Soya says, what is 50 grams of protein? Raw meat, cooked meat, I am confused. Let me clear that confusion for you. I'm referring to cooked protein. 50 grams of protein, 40 to 50 grams of protein is somewhere between eight to 10 ounces of cooked protein. So when you're logging it in, put that. If you, are, if you wanna use a great app for logging in your macros on keto, I don't focus too much on calories and macros, but if you're going to use one, I like Chronometer. And if you go to chronometer.com slash keto camp, you can get that app for free. We'll drop a link for it down below. That's chronometer.com slash keto camp. Darcy says, I just love your videos. I was wondering when you calculate your net carbs and the fiber is more grams than the carbs, what do you go by work it out? Hey Darcy, so if you want to go by net carbs, then you would just take your total carbs divided by the fiber that gives you your net carbs. The goal is not necessarily to focus too much on net carbs. I would uh, switch over to just focusing on total carbs. Make sure your upper limit is 50 grams per day and your total carbs are coming from green leafy vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, and you're verifying that you're in ketosis and have optimal glucose levels, which we'll talk about in a future video in this mega video. Okay, let's continue this mega super keto video and let's talk about five ways to know if you're in ketosis, how to test, ketones explain, let's get right into that. How do you know if you're in ketosis? In this video, I'm gonna break down five signs to pay attention to, to know if you are in the great land of ketosis. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp, and here at Keto Camp, we are on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. Super grateful you chose this video today, thank you. Let's talk about ketosis, the great land of ketosis. How do you know if you're in ketosis? I'm gonna give you five signs to pay attention to here, and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna teach you the optimal ways to actually test we're gonna talk about blood versus urine versus breath. What's the most accurate way? What are the most optimal numbers to hit? But also, these methods here are gonna teach you if you're in ketosis without even testing. So the first sign to know if you're in ketosis is mental clarity. Your brain fog is gone. You actually are now recalling names very easily, or able to adapt to stress, but you have this focus and clarity. It's hard to describe it, you know it when you feel it, you're super productive, you're on your A game, and you feel damn good. The reason is this, ketones fuel the brain much more efficiently than glucose. When you look at babies that are breastfed, did you know they go in and out of ketosis because breast milk has saturated fat and cholesterol and it actually helps the development of the brain. So beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is a, one of three ketones produced by the liver, actually crosses the blood-brain barrier and it turns your brain right on. So the brain is a fatty organ. It is only 2% in weight, but it sucks up about 20% of your body's energy needs. And guess what? It's made up of mostly fat. About 70 to 80% of your brain is made up of fat. 
your brain loves fat. So when you're in ketosis, you're giving your brain the building blocks it needs. So that's the first sign right there. You are mentally sharp. No more brain fog, no more brain fatigue. You feel like a keto rock star. The second sign to pay attention to is you're losing weight. Look, a lot of people come to keto for the weight loss, but they stay for the health. Because when you follow a healthy keto lifestyle, weight loss comes as a side effect. It's a byproduct of getting healthy because we get healthy to lose weight. So when you start dropping fat, burning fat, you are in ketosis because your body has now stopped burning the glucose and the sugar, and now your body has burned through its glycogen stores, which is your sugar reserves, and now it's burning your fat cells for energy. That's what we want. So you're losing two pounds, three pounds, four to five pounds per week when you are in ketosis because your body is doing what it's designed to do, which is to burn fat. It is our primal birthright. We have been using keto for 2.5 million years. So that's the second sign to pay attention to. You are dropping fat, you are burning fat as a side effect of ketosis. Just one little caveat here, when you are losing weight on keto, you might feel a little worse before you feel better. The reason is this, we store toxins in our fat cells. And let's face it, we live in a time and place in this world where we have more toxins than ever. And toxins enter the body through breathing, eating, touching our skin. And the body is so stinking smart. The number one priority for the body is survival. The innate intelligence, all it wants to do is survive. So when toxins enter the body, guess what happens? The body does not want those toxins to enter our vital organs, our heart, our kidney, our brain. So it activates the PPARY pathway, which actually signals those toxins to go and hide into fat cells or even creates new fat cells for those toxins to go live in. The body's doing this as a survival mechanism. It's amazing, but the problem is this. When you start losing weight and burning fat on keto, which you will do, now the body cannot burn those toxins, but it burns the fat cells, and those toxins end up getting dumped into the bloodstream, and you might not feel so good. So what are some things you can do? Bitters. Bitters are better. Bitters will help your liver stimulate bile, which will help take those toxins and get it out of the body. So here is a list of bitters I want you to incorporate on keto as you start losing the fat. Have some arugula, some dandelion greens, dandelion tea, ginger, ginger tea, lemons and limes. Sprinkle some lemons and limes on your keto meats and proteins, apple cider vinegar, and then rosemary, basil, and thyme. These are herbs that you could smell that'll help stimulate liver. But I also think it's a good idea to take an ox bile supplement. I use Systemic Formulas D-Digest. I'll put a link down below for the one that I use. The third sign to pay attention to, to know if you're in ketosis, is that you could skip a meal, maybe two meals, and you feel great. When you skip a meal and feel great, this means your body now has this metabolic flexibility to go from burning sugar to tapping into your fat cells and pulling out energy from your fat cells. So it actually sustains your glucose, in insulin levels, so you have peak energy levels, but also you don't get hangry, you don't get brain fog, you don't get irritable because your body's getting those calories from its own body fat. Isn't that super cool? You could get your calories from that plate of food in front of you, or you can get your calories from your butt, your hips, and your thighs. It's your choice. So that's the third sign to pay attention to. You skip a meal and you feel like a rock star. The opposite is true. If you skip a meal and you feel like crap, that's a sign that you're not in ketosis, you're not metabolically flexible, and there's still some work to do. Question of the day, how do you feel when you skip a meal? When you skip a meal, do you feel great? Or do you get irritable and you get hangry? Comment down below and let me know how you feel when you skip a meal. The fourth sign to pay attention to to know if you are keto adapted, fat adapted, is that your sugar and carb cravings are gone. When we are in ketosis, we adjust and reset our metabolism, but also our palate. So we start craving more healthy fats and proteins and less of the sugars and the carbs. You don't have to grab a protein bar or a shake or some sort of sugary beverage every two to three hours. You're not craving that anymore. It's gone like magic. I've seen those who have been addicted to sugar, myself included. I was a carbaholic, a snackaholic. I was a pure sugar burner. I was addicted to sugar because guess what? The same part of your brain lights up with a sugar and carb addiction 
as a cocaine addiction, making sugar as addicting as cocaine in this scenario. So speaking as a former sugar addict, you will reset your entire palate and those cravings will go away and like magic, it just disappears. So that is the fourth sign to know if you're keto adapted, you no longer have those sugar and carbohydrate cravings. Okay, before I reveal the fifth way to know if you're in ketosis, I want you to please, if you're getting any value from this video, smash the thumbs up button, let YouTube know this video is valuable. And if you're not subscribed to the Keto Camp YouTube channel yet, take a second here to hit that subscribe button with the bell so you're notified when we release a brand new video. The fifth way to know if you're in ketosis, which is actually the most accurate way to know, is to test. There are three different methods for testing ketones. We have urine, we have breath, and we have blood. Let's just take urine out of the equation because if you're testing your urine strips, your ketone urine strips, guess what? That's not accurate, especially after the first couple of weeks of doing keto. Once your body and your brain is efficient at using ketones, it will not show up in the urine, meaning you're gonna get frustrated saying, why am I not in ketosis? I'm doing everything right. But your body's just using those ketones, which is what we want. So urine, throw it out of the mix. We don't like urine trips here at Keto Camp. The second option is breath. Up until recently, I would say to stay away from breath, it wasn't really accurate, but I came across a meter called Biosense, which actually I have right here, and they actually have created the first accurate breath ketone meter. If you wanna check them out, I'll put a link down below with the coupon code for $20 off. But I wanna focus on blood in this video. Blood is the most accurate way. I like blood, I use Keto Mojo. I'll put a link for them down below. It tests your glucose and your ketone markers. And here is how you know if you're in ketosis. If you test your blood ketones, which is beta hydroxybutyrate, BHB, and it, it registers as 0.5 or higher, hey, congratulations, you're in the great land of ketosis. The goal is not to necessarily have high amounts of ketones. We don't chase ketones here at Keto Camp, we chase results. The sweet spot I've seen for most people is 0.8 to 2.8 on that Keto Mojo machine. But also we wanna check glucose because if we have high glucose and high ketones, the body is gonna burn the glucose first because glucose is a toxic fuel source and your body wants to get rid of that first. So we want optimal numbers of glucose. So I hope you're writing this down. The optimal numbers of a fasting glucose is 70 to 90, okay? Keto Mojo will give you that on a separate glucose strip. And then the optimal numbers for ketones, I already mentioned it, 0.8 to 2.8. Here are some advanced testing methods for you. One hour after eating a meal, which is called postprandial, test your glucose again. If your glucose is 120 or below, that's a great sign. That means your body is metabolically flexible. That keto meal did you well. Two hours after eating a meal, you want your glucose to be 100 or less. That's the optimal markers right there. I'm gonna put these markers down below in case you don't remember them. So test and let me know if you do test. Let me know what your numbers look like in the comment section down below. Also, a common question that I get all the time is, okay, I'm doing keto, I'm eating all these saturated fats and cholesterol, but my doctor is telling me that I have to go on a statin. My cholesterol is high. My parents are worried that I'm gonna have a heart attack. My friends are saying I'm gonna have a heart attack. Does keto cause high cholesterol? And if it does, does that increase your risk of a heart attack or a cardiovascular event? I wanna bust the myth here and break it all down for you and give you optimal markers to request from your doctor. Now that you understand five ways to know if you're in ketosis, how to test for it, let's get into some of the commonly asked questions based off of ketones from the Keto Camp community. Jen Prince says, what's the range for ketosis with Biosense? So with Biosense, what you wanna do is you wanna take the ACE score that you're getting from the Biosense meter, and you wanna compare that to something like a blood ketone. So if you're getting a 10 ACE score on your Biosense device, that would be a 1.0 with ketones. If you're getting a 20 ACE score on your Biosense machine, that would be a 2.0 beta hydroxybutyrate, and then a 30 would be a 3.0. That's a general comparison right there. If you go to the Biosense website, they have more comprehensive data on that. And you could go listen to my podcast I did with Trey Suntrup on the Keto Camp podcast where we talked about the Biosense device. We'll drop a link for that down below. Mick E Street says, I feel irritable and very angry when I skip a meal or fast for more than four hours. 
I also crave sweets, even if it's keto friendly. So based upon this video, I'm definitely not in ketosis. What am I doing wrong? So McE Street, you're not doing anything wrong. I don't want to blame you. Don't blame yourself. Remember, everything is on the way, not in the way. So it just sounds like you need to just work on that metabolism some more. I would start with sleep. Make sure your sleep is optimized, your stress is optimized. Do more of that 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two rule that I shared about earlier. Do that for 14 to 21 days, and then you could start experimenting with no snacking and the fasting, and you should see a positive effect. Okay, Ruby says, Hey everyone, happy weekend. I'm just wondering, is anyone out there like me? After two pounds of ground beef, I am still hungry. I eat two pounds of ground beef every day and still hungry. Am I broken? You're definitely not broken. No human is broken. So Ruby, what could be happening is that your body is maybe not assimilating the meat. So what you can do is take some HCL, uh, which is a supplement that could help you break down that meat and maybe help you become more full. You might want to also incorporate some other digestive enzymes. So taking that should make a big difference for helping you feel full. Maybe you also switch up to a different protein source, some chicken or some bison or some fish and see if it's just the beef that's not allowing you to be full or if it's all protein. So that could give you a big leg up with helping you feel full and also make sure your sleep is good because I've seen with sleep deprivation, you are lowering your hormone leptin, which is your ability to be satisfied and full. But when you get quality sleep, you get optimized leptin levels. So that could be a big thing for you as well. Moss Borneo says, thank you for the wonderful work helping us get healthy. I've been following you for over a year and I'm always learning something new from watching your videos. You mentioned Biosense Meter and $20 off. Can you post a link for that? Thank you so much. I'm so grateful you've been watching the videos and you're always learning something new. Yeah, if you go to mybiosense.com, we'll drop a link down below. It goes right to their website. That's mybiosense.com. We do have a $20 off coupon, their meter. If you put Keto Camp at checkout, you could get 20 bucks off their breath ketone meter. Final question here before we get to the next video is from Christine. Please advise me on what the best app is for tracking. Thanks. Yeah, I mentioned it a little while ago. I love Chronometer. It's a free app. They have a premium paid version. You could get either one, but chronometer.com slash Keto Camp gets you a great download for that free app. That's the best one I've seen. They, it's clean to use. It looks really aesthetically pleasing and it's very easy to use. So chronometer.com slash keto camp. Let's continue this super video on keto. I'm so glad you're still with me. Let's get into this next video, which is going to talk about keto and heart disease. I'm going to review keto blood work. We're going to look at the cholesterol panel, the lipid panel, and what it actually means to empower you to understand how cholesterol and keto works. So let's get right into that. Does following a low carb, high fat diet like the ketogenic diet cause your cholesterol to go up? And if it does, is that a bad thing? In this video, we're going to assess the benefits and the risks from eating saturated fat and cholesterol on your keto diet. And we're going to review the specific lab markers to request from your doctor to know whether or not keto is working for you. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp. And hey, here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. In this 10-part series of understanding how keto works, in the previous video, we talked about five signs to pay attention to to know whether or not you are in ketosis and are fat adapted. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure you stick or tap this and watch it when this video is done. But here, we're going to talk about cholesterol. There are so many myths regarding cholesterol and saturated fat, and we're going to debunk a lot of these myths. But before we do, I have a question for you, which is the question of the day. Has your doctor told you that you have high cholesterol? And has your doctor recommended something like a statin? Let me know by commenting in the section down below. So let's dig into why cholesterol has had such a bad rap and why it has such a poor PR team. Let's get into the research of Ansel Keys. So a lot of people ask me the question, which is, Ben, will my cholesterol go up on a ketogenic diet? Maybe, but is that a bad thing if it does? Well, let's break it all down. The reason cholesterol has such a bad rap is because of this gentleman you see right here. His name is Ansel Keys. And if you want to learn more about the history of this, I, I recommend 
reading Nina Teicholt's book called The Big Fat Surprise. But this gentleman was the creator of the World War II K ration. He's the author of what's called the Seven Country Study, which he excluded 16 countries that didn't support his narrative, his theory. Uh, he was the reason why we got into the trans fat margarine and started to eat low fat, fat free. Here's the deal. Here's how Ansel Keys faked it. He said in his research that these six studies, or I should say these six countries, had high amounts of heart attacks, and he correlated that to the high amount of cholesterol they consume. But they were consuming rancid fats. And he also didn't share that he surveyed 22 countries, but he didn't see a good relationship there. It, was a, it didn't support his theory, so he excluded that intentionally. He fooled the world, essentially, and we're still dealing with his false data. So the reason Ansel Keys and a lot of people say cholesterol is bad for you is because they say, hey, when we do autopsies on heart attack victims, these heart attack victims show a lot of cholesterol that's built up in the arteries. Therefore, the cholesterol is what caused the damage is what they say. Is that true? Well, I don't think it is. Well, I know that it's not because that's like saying, hey, we sh always show up to when buildings are on fire, we show up to the fire and there's always firefighters at the building. What gives? Why are there always firefighters at the building? Therefore, we're going to say the firefighters are what caused the fire in the building. No, no, that's not true. The firefighters are there to protect to help with the inflammation, the fire, to put out the fire. The firefighters are healing. The firefighters are a band-aid. The firefighters are helping with the problem, which is inflammation, the fire. So when we see cholesterol, cholesterol is a band-aid. Cholesterol is a healer. There is very many, many important reasons why we love cholesterol in the body. So here's the deal. This study in Science News showed that most heart attack patients cholesterol levels did not indicate heart attack or cardiac risk. Another study in Harvard showed that more people, get this, more people die from heart disease with normal to low cholesterol than with high cholesterol. What? How is that even true? Well, is the media talking about this? Is your doctor, doctor talking about this? No. So there are four main purposes of cholesterol that I'm going to break down for you right now. Number one, it's going to be the fact that cholesterol is the building blocks of your hormones. Look, if you want to burn fat, if you want to feel good, if you want to have healthy hormones, eat quality cholesterol, non-rancid fats, which I'll talk about a little bit later, which are those fats. But cholesterol, LDL cholesterol makes your sex hormones, okay? The brain is mostly fat, which we'll get into, but also your cell membranes are also made up of protein, saturated fat and cholesterol. We have over 600 hormones in the body and hormones are just chemical messengers. Hormones are sending signals to your cells. They are docking on your receptor sites, which are also called integral membrane proteins. The message is going within your cells. Your cells are producing energy. Your mitochondria is burning fat and you feel good. That's what cholesterol is doing. So if you deprive your body from cholesterol, you deprive this process. It doesn't work efficiently. Number two, I already mentioned it, your cell membrane is made up of cholesterol, protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. Look, the cell membrane is the key to health. Dr. Daniel Pompo, my coach and mentor, says it all the time. Life begins and life ends at the cell membrane. The cell membrane is this lipid bilayer around your 70 trillion cells that protects your cells, okay? It is the bodyguard of your cells. It allows good things in. It allows bad things out. It tells your genes to turn on good genes and it tells your genes to turn off bad genes. That's correct. You could control your genetics. You cannot change your genes, but you can control whether or not you want to turn on or turn off genes. So think of genes as a light switch you turn on and turn off. And what communicates to your DNA nucleus is the cell membrane. So when you eat quality fats and give your cell membranes these building blocks, this process works the way that God created us and the way that it's designed to work. Your brain is also made up of cholesterol. 
and your nervous system. So we know that at least 60% of the brain is fat. So when somebody says, hey, fat head, say thank you so much. I know I'm very smart and I designed this way. <laughs> so fat is important for your brain to function. Think about this. Breast milk is made up of saturated fat and cholesterol because it helps the development of the brain. So babies do go in and out of ketosis, by the way, because the breast milk has saturated fat and cholesterol. The next thing is that cholesterol helps to make bile and vitamin D. Why is bile important? Well, if you're eating fats on keto, which you should be eating quality fats, bile is what helps break down the fat. It is a detergent to help break down the fat and assimilate those fat soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. Bile breaks it down. Bile also helps eliminate toxins and cholesterol also makes helps your body synthesize and create um, vitamin D. So the number one reason people feel like crap on keto is they can't make healthy bile. Well, cholesterol helps make healthy bile. And vitamin D, by the way, is actually a hormone within the body, uh, particularly a um, steroid hormone in the body. So we know that vitamin D is really a precursor to a steroid hormone. And vitamin D impacts your skeletal structure, it also helps with your blood pressure, your immune system, mood, brain function, and the ability to protect against certain cancers. So we should not be afraid of cholesterol. So how do you test for cholesterol? First of all, let me, let me show you something here. Let me stop my share. So when it comes to measuring your cholesterol in the body, it's important to understand this. Cholesterol cannot freely move through the body. It needs to be carried in a vehicle, which is also a particle. These particles are called LDL particles. Now, LDL has been coined the bad cholesterol, but that's not necessarily true. Nothing in the body is black and white. <laughs> it's very important to understand the body is very complex. So let's break down why it's important to, yes, get your LDL measurements done, but the particles are what's really important when assessing your risk of heart disease. So when uh, your doctor measures your LDL and says, hey, you have high LDL, we are concerned, we need to put you on a statin. What your doctor is measuring is the amount of cholesterol within an LDL particle. As you can see here, if you have high cholesterol within a certain particle, your doctor is going to say you have high LDL. If you have low cholesterol within a certain particle, your doctor is gonna say you have low LDL. But this is not important. This, because look, here's the analogy. This vehicle right here, you see this car, two people inside. Let's imagine this vehicle is now in a traffic jam on the highway, they are stuck. What's more important in that traffic jam? The number of people inside of the vehicle, right? The number of cholesterol inside the particle or the number of cars on the road. Of course, the number of people within the vehicle is irrelevant to the traffic jam. What's more important is the number of cars on the road. Same thing with your cholesterol LDL particles. The total amount of LDL is irrelevant. We wanna know how many particles are on the road because just like this analogy, the more vehicles on the road, on the highway, the more oxidative stress from the car fumes, the more accidents that will occur, the more damage that is done. Same thing with your LDL particles. If you have too many particles, especially these small and sticky ones that I'm gonna break down, it can cause inflammation in your arterial wall leading to heart disease. So it's important to measure your LDL particles because they're also split into two different categories. We have the large and fluffy LDL particles and then we have the small and sticky. So if you look here, this is your artery. If you have a ton of large and fluffy LDL particles, that's what this represents, these larger dots. These are actually good particles that go through your arteries. They could actually help clear up plaque and they're not a problem. But if you have a lot of these small and sticky particles, which you see right here that are lodged into the arterial wall, that could lead to problems, especially if you also have inflammation present with those small and sticky particles because the inflammation will drive those small particles to your arterial wall as a way to kind of clean it up and repair it. Remember the firefighter analogy? It's there to repair the, the problem. So we wanna make sure we're measuring both particles. And let's get into some more of these measurements. I'm gonna give you the optimal ranges for this and other markers to assess. Here's what I want you to do. 
get your total cholesterol done. And here are just general markers for you to pay attention to. So I hope you're writing these down. I'll, I'll explain it. So we want for women, your cholesterol, total cholesterol should be somewhere between 250 or lower. For men, it should be um, 220 or lower. These are just general terms. Remember, total cholesterol doesn't mean much if you're not looking at the full spectrum. But measure the particles via a test called NMR test. An NMR test is looking at, it's called nuclear magnetic resonance. Nuclear magnetic resonance, which is looking at your LDL particle sizes. So yes, NMR test is gonna look at the different particles. So we want our LDLP to be less than 1,000 and our small LDL to be less than 500. Then we wanna look at our HDL, which is high density lipoprotein. This is very protective. We want our HDL to be 70 or higher, that's optimal. Our triglycerides, we want that to be 100 or less or even better under 70. And then we also want to look at our triglyceride uh, to HDL ratio. So we want, to, we want to divide your total triglycerides by HDL. And if you have greater than six, this could be a problem. Two or less is optimal, all right? So these are the markers that I want you to test for. But also, we want to look at your inflammatory markers because it's not just your lipid profile, your cholesterol profile that's important, it's also putting that in the perspective of how much oxidative stress is in your body. So looking at your inflammatory markers. So here are the markers that I test on myself and I recommend to the members of the Keto Camp Academy. We wanna look at high sensitivity C-reactive protein. This is a great marker to assess your risk of a cardiovascular event. Optimal is less than one even better, less than 0.5. We also want to look at homocysteine, which is inflammation in your arteries, but also in the brain. We want this to be less than 10, optimally less than five. And then we want to look at our, our A1C, which is your three month average of your fasting glucose, or I should say your glucose in general. We want to look at your A1C. We want to keep it below 5.2. And then we want to look at your fasting insulin. We want to keep that below 10 and you wanna maintain a fasting glucose of around 72 to 90. If you're hitting those numbers, then you're not driving these cholesterol particles into your arteries to create problems. So the question is asked, what about eggs? What about avocados, coconut oils? These drive my cholesterol up. They might, like they do for me, but they drop my inflammatory marker. So as long as you're seeing that trend, when I'm seeing that trend, I love that trend. Okay, so eggs will not cause heart disease. Quality healthy fats like coconut oil, avocados, grass-fed beef, uh, wild-caught fish, healthy, stable, saturated fats will not lead to heart disease. What will lead to heart disease? I'm glad that you asked. Vegetable oils and high carbohydrate, high sugar processed foods will lead to heart disease. That means we don't want to consume things like canola oil, grapeseed oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil. We don't want to eat high carbs. We don't want to eat a whole bunch of processed foods because that will lead to heart disease. That will lead to issues with your health. So now you understand the root cause of heart disease. It is not healthy fats that you're having on keto. Those healthy fats are actually reducing inflammation. It's actually these inflammatory fats. It's the high sugars, high carbohydrates, these processed foods that are the real culprit. Something else I know you're wondering is how is eating fat going to help you lose fat? A lot of people believe that fat makes you fat. Is that true? I hope that made a lot of sense because a lot of doctors are just ready to prescribe a statin and this conversation that you could have with them could be more of an educational conversation so you're not bullied by your doctor. Before we move on to the next video, which is video number seven in this 10 part series, the next video is gonna talk about three ways to lose weight with keto. Let's get to a few more of your questions from the amazing Keto Camp community, you. Eva says, yes, he was worried about high LDL, but had no way of testing LDL versus VLDL and recommended a statin. I explained my keto diet and said I would never take a statin. He said he would just keep an eye on this. I have to educate my doctor and I will. Eva, that is amazing. Way to take ownership and empowerment and not to be bullied by your doctor. Your doctor should get that NMR test looking at the LDL particle sizes before they're ready to prescribe that statin. So kudos to you. You are a free thinker and I love what you just shared. 
Private Susie says, Ben, can you address the APOE4 gene and consumption of saturated fats? Yeah. If you have that gene, definitely work with the practitioner and continuously monitor those numbers. At the end of the day, what matters most is oxidative stress. It's inflammation. So you got to get those inflammatory markers done at least once a year. And if those are optimal, if I had that gene, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to it, even if my cholesterol was up. With that being said, you might do better with monounsaturated fats. You might do better with more olive oils and almonds and, of course, quality types of products there and limiting your saturated fats to an extent. Doesn't mean you have to avoid it altogether. With that being said, this is not medical advice, so work with the practitioner, but that's the way I would handle it if I had that gene. Esther says, I'm taking a vitamin E supplement with soybean oil. Is that a bad thing? I'm 50 and perimenopausal. Esther, I'm sorry to inform you that yes, soybean oil is one of those bad toxic fats which actually could lead to heart disease, lead to weight loss resistance, and a whole host of problems. So I would switch to a healthier brand without the soybean oil. Yolanda says, yes, my cholesterol was 202. I was offered and declined cholesterol meds. Fasting keto and 73 pounds of weight loss kept me off of meds. My blood pressure meds were reduced by 50%, working towards another 73 pounds by the end of 2020. Yolanda. Yolanda, let us know. Did you lose those 73 pounds by the end of last year? That is amazing, first of all. I, we all just acknowledge you and congratulate you, Yolanda. That is amazing for you to just lose the weight, to get healthy, lose the weight, have the conversation with your doctor, reduce the blood pressure medication. You are the perfect example of the human body. You are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master. Amen to you and keep healing. Julie Gray says, I have high cholesterol and doc recommended a statin. I said no because HDL was 86 and triglycerides were 53, large and number of fluffy LDL guys. Julie, congratulations to you. It's crazy that doctors are so ready to prescribe that statin, but you understood the lab panel, you had a conversation and it was your right to decline it. So kudos to you. I love that you are a free thinker. Let's continue this awesome super keto video. If you're still with me, let me know. Ben, I'm with you in the chat box. I just love to see who is committed to really understanding this amazing process called the ketogenic lifestyle. The next video is gonna teach you three ways to lose weight Keep it off for good with keto. Let's get right into that. The ketogenic diet can be a powerful way to lose some extra body fat. A lot of people are confused thinking, how is eating fat going to help me lose fat? Well, in this video, we're gonna debunk that myth and then I'm gonna give you three ways to practice keto the right way for weight loss and fat loss. I'm also gonna show you how to do it the wrong way, which can actually lead to weight gain. So let's get all into it in this video. Hey Keto Camper, Ben is out of here, best-selling author of three books, the founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. In this 10-part keto series, we have documented how to do keto the right way, the right foods to eat, what are the right markers for ketosis, and so much more. This video is focusing on weight loss with keto. I'm gonna outline for you three ways to burn fat and keep it off for good when you follow these three steps. So without further ado, let's get right into this. First thing we need to understand is that we don't lose weight to get healthy. This is where a lot of educators and doctors and nutritionists get it wrong. We get healthy to lose weight. All right, I'm gonna say that again, so I really hope you understand this, and Dr. Berg says this all the time, and you know what, he's right. We don't lose weight to get healthy, we get healthy to lose weight. So the question is, how do we get healthy? How do we use ketosis to get healthy? Well, it starts at the cellular level, and that's what you see right here. This is a cell, one cell, that I have drawn so beautifully for you. <laughs> Inside the body, we have 70 to 100 trillion of these cells. Inside of your cells, you have your DNA nucleus. Yes, the genes you were born with that you cannot change, but you can change the expression of those genes. We have our little mitochondria, which is the engine of your cells, if you will, that produce ATP. I'm gonna relate this to fat loss. We have at least eight fat-burning hormones that we know of. I wanna put three right here, which is the thyroid T3, the active form of thyroid. Every cell has a receptor for the thyroid hormone, testosterone, human growth hormone, and other fat-burning hormones. But here's how weight loss works. Here's how your hormones, which is the language of the human body, works inside your body. 
Every cell has a lipid bilayer around it. This is called the cell membrane. It's made up of, guess what? Protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. Yes, you are made of fat. Your body loves fat. The right fat, which we'll talk about later, not carbohydrates. In fact, less than 1% of the total body is made up of carbohydrates. So on your cell membrane is your cell receptor sites. That's this right there. There could be 30,000, around 30,000 of these receptor sites on one cell. Think of them as cell phone antenna signals that are just receiving signals. What are they receiving signals from? Your hormones, your nutrients, your oxygen, but we're relating this to your fat burning hormones. So when you are in ketosis, doing it the right way, the way that I'm gonna teach you here, your fat burning hormones send signals to your cells. The message is being heard. The mitochondria burns fat, and you lose weight as a side effect. You produce energy, so you feel good, you have high energy levels. That's the way you were designed to be. When you are not functioning this way, there is one reason for it, and there is one word for it, and that word is inflammation. I know you've heard of inflammation from a sore shoulder, from a CrossFit workout, or a sprained ankle from basketball. That is inflammation, but what I'm referring to is cell membrane inflammation. When there's cell membrane inflammation, guess what? Your fat burning hormones, now they cannot get into your cells and you're not gonna feel well. You're not gonna burn fat. So what we wanna do is we wanna use keto. I'm gonna teach you three ways to use keto to downregulate cell membrane inflammation and as a side effect, you lose weight. As a side effect, you have more energy. As a side effect, you get the results you want. And guess what? they stick around long term. This is not yo-yo weight loss fad dieting here. This is true cellular health. Therefore, stop focusing on weight loss and start focusing on cell membrane inflammation. And hey, when it comes to hormones, there's only one fat storage hormone in the body, and that is insulin. Here's a simple rule for you to understand. High insulin, fat storage. Low insulin, fat burning. So which foods cause the most insulin and glucose spike in the body? Carbohydrates and eating frequently. Fat, eating a ketogenic diet, rich in healthy fats, does not barely touch the dial on insulin. Insulin is the bully of the block. When you activate insulin, all of a sudden your fat burning hormones, they've scattered, they're gone. They cannot coexist. Insulin is that bully and you activate it with carbohydrates. Therefore, when you eat fat like you do on keto, you're keeping insulin low and you're in a fat burning state. Think of it this way. When you eat carbohydrates, your body raises glucose. Inside your body, it's a very tightly regulated system. It wants to keep glucose low in the bloodstream. About one to two teaspoons of bloodstream in the body is considered normal. And when you eat carbohydrates, you have more than that. So the body calls the insulin troops to take the glucose out of the bloodstream, put it into your cells, and store fat. When you're eating keto, you don't have this problem. You're keeping insulin low and you're burning your own body fat and producing ketones. That's what we wanna do here and that's what you're going to achieve. So let's get into these three ways to use keto the right way so you could burn fat on keto and keep it off for good. Number one way is to understand clean keto versus dirty keto. Not all fats are created equal. You could be eating ketogenic fats that might get you in ketosis yet they're eliciting a strong inflammatory response. Remember I showed you the cells and the inflammation around your cells? This can happen with bad, unstable, rancid fats on keto. And a lot of people who do keto eat these fats not knowing that they're creating a lot of inflammation in their body and they're wondering why they're not getting the results they want on keto. So what are these bad fats? It's the vegetable oils, it's the canola oil, the corn oil, the grapeseed oil, the cottonseed oil, the soybean oils. Stay away from these vegetable oils because there was a study that showed these vegetable oils create 132 days of cell membrane inflammation. I've interviewed Dr. Kate Shanahan, Professor Peskin from MIT, and they all say that these vegetable oils are worse than smoking cigarettes. They create massive amounts of inflammation in your body, so let's stay away from them. We also have things like the artificial sweeteners like sucralose and aspartames, which could create gut dysbiosis. Stay away from that on keto. And stay away from the trans fats, the margarines. Those are bad fats. You wanna get rid of them from your ketogenic diet and switch over to clean keto foods that are 
stable fats that help your cell membrane allow these hormones to attach and burn fat. Grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, pastured eggs, organic free-range chicken, bison, nuts and seeds. I mean, I have videos on my channel with list and list of healthy keto foods, but this is just a small sample for you to understand that healthy fats, clean keto is key. Let's not be one of those keto bros that goes to McDonald's and grabs the Big Mac, asks for it without the bun and say, hashtag we're keto. No, that might be keto, but that is not healthy and that's not what we teach here at Keto Camp. The second tip for you to accelerate fat loss with keto is to add intermittent fasting to your ketogenic diet. Intermittent fasting and ketosis go hand in hand because they both do a great job at keeping insulin low. The way I teach it inside of the Keto Camp Academy is to get fat adapted first with keto, get into ketosis, and then pair intermittent fasting because here's the analogy that I got from my colleague, Dr. Jason Fung. When you are eating carbohydrates and eating foods that stimulate glucose in the bloodstream, you're storing that as sugar reserves called glycogen stores. We could store about 2,000 calories of these sugar reserves. So think of them as just strings of sugars that your body stores and packs away in your muscle and liver cells. That I'm gonna compare to a wallet. Think of your wallet inside of your pocket. For men, you pull out the wallet, it's very easy to get cash and put cash right back in. That's equivalent to your glycogen reserves. Very easy to put sugar in, take sugar out. Very easy access, that's the benefit. But the drawback is that there is limited reserves in your wallet. You can only put so much cash before it's packed and then you need more wallets. Well, the body can only store about 2,000 calories of these sugar reserves and then you store body fat in excess. Not good. So with adding fasting into the mix, you teach your body to start burning its own body fat stores. You teach the body to switch over, burn through that wallet, if you will, burn through your glycogen stores and start burning your own body fat. So I compare body fat, your body fat stores on your body right now to the bank safe you have down the street. It's a longer process to get to that bank, but voila, once you have access to the bank safe, there's almost unlimited reserves there and you could go days and years. Somebody has fasted over a year, by the way, just burning your own body fat. So we have an option here in keto, doing keto. We can get our keto calories from the plate of food in front of us, or we could get it from our butt, our hips, and our thighs. You choose. So here's a great schedule for you to follow, an intermittent fasting schedule for you to follow on keto to get amazing fat loss results. It's called the 18-6 schedule. This is great for you to do on a daily basis, and how it works is 18 hours out of the day, you are in a fasted state. You're just having some water, some sea salt. You're letting your body get its own calories from your body fat. Your liver is producing ketones and you're feeling good. You should feel like a rock star if you've done this the right way, but your body is burning body fat throughout those 18 hours. And then six hours out of the day, you have your eating window. Let's call it a feasting window. Feast it up with ketogenic rich meals. Have two meals within those six hours. For example, 12 p.m. you have you break your fast and then you finish your second meal at 6 p.m. So 12 to 6 p.m. eating window and then outside of that fasting window. If you follow that 18-6 schedule with your ketogenic approach, watch the fat just melt off. Before I get into the third and final tip here, please smash that thumbs up button if you're getting any value and hey, hit the subscribe button if you're brand new to the Keto Camp YouTube channel. I have a quick question for you, which is the question of the day. Do you currently practice intermittent fasting with your ketogenic lifestyle? And if you do, what is your go-to schedule? Put a comment down below and let me know. The third tip here is this. When you break your fast, break it the right way. We do not want to break our intermittent fast by combining carbohydrates and fat, even if it's some carbs and fat, because here's what happens. When you break your fast, your hormones are very sensitive. Insulin is very sensitive. This is good, we want sensitive hormones. But when you break the fast with some carbohydrates, you're gonna spike glucose, your body will do a great job at grabbing the glucose out of the bloodstream and taking it to your cells, unlocking these cell doors and driving the glucose into your cells. Amazing, however, when you have fat with that carb meal, the fat goes along for the ride and it could actually slow down fat burning and maybe even cause weight gain. So don't break your fast with the combination of fat 
and carbs. Instead, break your fast the right way, and that's going to be with mostly protein and some fat. What would be an example of that? Well, bone broth. I love bone broth. I personally don't make my own bone broth, but hey, if you did, more power to you. Make your own bone broth. Not only is bone broth loaded in things like collagen and specific amino acids, which really help the body, but it is also mostly protein and some fat, which is the ideal meal for breaking your fast. My go-to for bone broth is with my friends over at Kettle and Fire. I'll put a link for them down below. We have an exclusive 15% off code with Kettle and Fire, or you could just head to kettleandfire.com slash ketocamp, use ketocamp at checkout. Another option for you to break your fast the right way is going to be with some eggs and some avocados and maybe some green leafy vegetables. That's mostly fat, mostly protein, two thumbs up. One more example for you to break your fast the right way is going to be a fatty keto smoothie with some coconut milk, some collagen protein powder, some nut butters in there, maybe some ice, blend it all together. That's also a great way to break your fast. When you break your fast that way, you're going to continue your fat loss efforts. So those are your three tips for you to get amazing weight loss results on keto. Now what if you're doing all these things but you've hit a stall, you hit a plateau? It turns out there's five reasons why I have seen people hit a keto plateau. All right, let's get into some questions based off of the video you just saw from the Keto Camp community. Ron Nautical says, don't break fast with any carbs, but you mentioned avocados and greens to eat with eggs to break a fast. Yeah, so when I say don't break a, a fast with carbs, I mean carbs that are really going to spike your glucose and insulin. Avocados and green leafy vegetables, it's not a substantial of, a, of enough of a spike to create that problem that I was referring to in the video. So avocado and green leafy vegetables with eggs and fat, totally fine. Natalie Goff says, hello, I started keto clean approximately two months ago and I have been four weeks in and I have this chronic chest pain, uncomfortable gas, like deep pain in my upper left breast, which later travels to the day under my ribs and stays there, help. Natalie, it might be that you have something called small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, SIBO. So that might happen when you eat more cruciferous vegetables. So transitioning away from more of those cruciferous vegetables and having more animal-based protein could help with that. I also recommend a few products. A trantile is a great digestive enzyme that could help with that pain of the, the gas and the bloating. I'll drop a link for them down below. And then work on healing the gut. You might want to test to see if you do have that SIBO. In June, Chief says, so a good meal to break your fast would be eggs, bacon, and with eggs cooked in some butter or bacon grease. Yep, that sounds delicious. It's mostly protein and fat. That would be a good way to break your fast, absolutely. Next question comes from Jennifer Jackson. Jennifer says, I have been doing keto since January and I absolutely love it. I follow a 24 intermittent fasting schedule every day and normally break my fast with three boiled eggs and an avocado. I love your channel. Well, that's not necessarily a question, but I love your comment. I love your schedule. I love how consistent you are, Jennifer. Keep pushing forward, keep doing what you're doing. It sounds like you're doing a lot of the things that I'm teaching in this super video, so congrats to you. We have three more videos to go on this super keto video. If you're getting value from this so far, hit the thumbs up button on the video down below. And if you're not subscribed to the Keto Camp YouTube channel, subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and also hit that bell next to the video so you're notified when we release a brand new video or go live or do any cool things that we do on this channel. We're dedicated to releasing two to four brand new videos on this channel every single week. Now let's get into video number eight in this 10 part series on five ways to break a keto stall or a keto plateau. Let's go. So you hit a plateau on keto. All of a sudden your results came to a screeching halt. Weight loss has stopped. Maybe you're even gaining weight. Maybe your energy levels are starting to get fluctuating all over the place. It turns out there are five reasons why you stop losing weight on keto, and there's also five solutions to each of them. And in this video, I'm gonna reveal it all to you. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here. I am the best-selling author of three books, and I'm also the founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one 
billion people. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video and joining me today. This video is part of my 10 part series on following keto the right way. So if you've missed previous videos, make sure you click the link down below where we put the playlist down for you. The number one cause of weight loss resistance and even weight gain is cellular inflammation. And I talked about this in the previous videos on three ways to lose weight with keto, where I drew the cell for you. So if you didn't watch that video, click the little card here and you can watch that after this video. But when you have inflammation around your cells, now the receptor sites on your cells cannot hear the message from your hormones. Your fat burning hormones can't get in, your feel good hormones can't get in, and then weight starts to develop or weight gain starts to develop or you stop losing weight as a side effect. But nobody has a weight problem. If you know my story, I was obese for most of my life. I weighed 250 pounds back in 2008. I didn't have a weight problem, I had a weight symptom. Therefore, when we take care of the cause, the side effect is that we lose the weight. The symptom goes away by default. So all five steps I'm gonna teach you here in this video are designed to bring down inflammation and as a side effect, you'll lose weight fast. Losing weight is not about calories in versus calories out. Yeah, I believe calories matter, but I don't think they're important. In fact, they're not important. I know they're not important because the body has no mechanisms, no receptor sites for counting calories, so why the heck do we continue to count them? Counting calories and focusing on just macros and calories in versus calories out, just a huge distraction to what really matters. What really matters is what I just explained to you, the hormones and the cell metabolism, because the human body is not a calculator, the human body is not a math equation. The human body is not a bank account. The human body is a complex chemistry lab, and when you start treating it as such, the body begins to heal. When you remove the interference, the body will heal because we are an amazing creation. You are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master. So let's get into these five tips. The number one tip here is to change your routine, and I'll give you some options here, but. Why do I say this? Because if you think about the best personal trainers and fitness coaches out there, what do they all have in common? What do they do to help their clients to continue getting amazing fitness results? They always change up the workouts for their clients. It keeps the body guessing. It forces adaptation. It's the same thing with keto. If you're eating the same keto foods day in, day out, your body will achieve a homeostasis. So we want to mix things up. We wanna throw a wrench in your routine because when you change the keto routine up, good cells get stronger, bad cells don't adapt. Your body forces this adaptation and it cleans out the bad mitochondria that stop burning fat and it helps the good mitochondria get even stronger and burn more fat. So switch up the keto foods that you're eating and if you're not intermittent fasting with keto, that's a great way to mix things up and if you are intermittent fasting with keto, change your fasting routine. Change it up and watch the results skyrocket. The second tip here is to do not mix fat and carbohydrates together. Even if it's about 30 grams or so of carbs at one meal, that's still keto friendly because you're under the 50 gram mark. But if you combine those 20 to 30 grams of carbs with fat, it could slow down your fat loss efforts. Because when you eat the carbohydrates, you spike the glucose, the glucose now is shuttled into your cells, and if you have fat with that meal, the fat goes along for the ride. I've spoken about this before. So we do not wanna mix fat and carbs. If you're going to have your carbohydrates on keto, even if it's limited, have them alone, away from your fat. You could have them with protein, but not with fat. We wanna make sure we're not combining the fat and the carbs. And if you're making that mistake, this little switch could help accelerate your fat loss efforts. Number three tip is that you're either not exercising enough or you're exercising too much. It's like the Goldilocks effect here. So let's talk about the former. If you're not exercising right now, but you're doing keto, you're doing fasting, it's time to build some lean muscle. When I say that, I'm not talking about a body bodybuilder here. I'm not talking about some gains and doing CrossFit, although that could be helpful. I'm talking about building lean muscle, which are calorie absorbers. If you wanna help your metabolism become more efficient, and have more flexibility with your eating routine, 
then lean muscle will help you accomplish that because muscle is the longevity organ. So throw in some high intensity interval training. Four to five times per week is ideal where you're going and doing about a 15 to 20 minute workout, getting the heart rate up, letting it drop back down getting it up, letting it drop back down. I'm gonna give you a few of my favorite workout movements for you to do. Burpees, squats, jumping squats, bench press, push-ups, planks, lunges, shoulder press. These are all primal movements that recruit multiple joints at the same time, multiple muscle fibers, as opposed to curls and leg extensions. We don't wanna do isolated movements, so make the most of your workouts by doing these compound movements. Let's say you are exercising. You might be doing too much exercise. I saw this all the time when I used to own a CrossFit gym here in Miami, Florida, where I saw excessive exercise. Exercise is a stressor to the body. And if you're doing too much, it could increase your cortisol levels, which will cause your body to store fat. Not good. So it might be a good idea for you to start adding some longer walks into your routine. When you work out and lift weights and do some burst training, which I recommended right now, your body is not really burning fat during that portion of the workout. Your body is releasing fat into your bloodstream. When you add a long walk to your workouts or just do long fasted walks, your body is then burning that fat. So there you have it. There is a sweet spot here with too little exercise. We don't want that and too much exercise. That could be just as bad. So assess, do an audit on your current routine and find that sweet spot that works for you. Real quick, a shout out to GC3 Fitness, who is my go-to resource for all things fitness. Go watch his videos. I'm gonna put his handle or his YouTube channel down below in the comment section, or you can just type in GC3 Fitness for all things fitness-related videos. You could find a whole host of great fitness videos. Let's move on to tip number four here. This one is huge because I've seen individuals do keto perfectly. They got their macros on point, they're eating clean keto, they're doing fasting, they're exercising the right way but they're missing this component. And that's going to be sleep and stress. Sleep is the Swiss army knife of health. If you're sacrificing sleep, you are doing it wrong. You're doing it backwards because sleep and stress, these are the fundamentals of health, builds a foundation for your health. And when you have a strong foundation, then the keto and the fasting and the exercise and the supplements work that much better. But when you don't have that strong foundation, your health, will fall apart wall by wall. So if you're not getting seven to eight hours of quality sleep tonight, you're doing your fat loss a disservice because guess what? Most of your fat burning takes place during delta sleep, stage four sleep. Not only that, this is where your brain shrinks in size and you have this fluid that flushes over your brain and it activates the glymphatic system where it flushes out toxins and reduces inflammation and burns fat. If you're not getting quality deep sleep and quality REM sleep, then guess what happens? Your body is not going to detoxify and it's not going to burn fat and you're gonna wonder why you are not losing weight. So here are some quick tips for you to get better sleep starting tonight. Make sure your bedroom is cold and dark. When I say cold, studies show 62 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit is the sweet spot for deep stage four delta sleep where your body is blasting fat. I know it sounds cold, but set that thermostat. Make sure the room is dark because light will activate cortisol and suppress melatonin. Not good if you wanna get good deep sleep. So wear an eye face mask or put some blackout curtains. I do have a sleep kit that I put together for you over at ketocampkit.com. You could also see that by clicking the link in the section down below. And my final tip here for sleep is to drink some banana tea. Uh, shout out to my colleague, Dr. Michael Bruce, America's Sleep Doctor, who taught me this, but banana tea. I know you're thinking, banana is not keto, bro. What the heck? You're not gonna actually eat the banana. The peel of the banana has more of these micronutrients, the potassium, the magnesium, than the banana itself. So what you wanna do is cut the ends off this organic banana, leave the peel on, boil that water for five, seven minutes until the peel starts to brown, and these micronutrients will start to seep out into the water and drink that banana tea and you could freeze the banana or discard it or give it to a family member or your husband or wife who's not doing keto. But you just drink the banana tea. And this is like nature's NyQuil. It could really help calm the mind and relax you. So yeah, go and drink the banana tea, make that bedroom cold, make it dark and go check out my friend Devin Burke 
on here on YouTube for some amazing sleep videos. I actually interviewed him on this channel as well. And then part of this number four tip is stress. I never say manage your stress. I think that's bogus. We want to master stress. And it really starts, this might sound woo-woo, but it really starts with self-love and gratitude. You could be doing keto perfectly and get into an argument with somebody or watch the news and be stressed out for what's happening in the world. That'll raise cortisol, which is that stress hormone. It'll activate your sympathetic tone. Guess what follows? Glucose and insulin. And when glucose and insulin goes up, ketones drop. And you're storing fat just from mental, emotional stress. So have some sort of outlet. Maybe it's yoga, meditation, long walks, light exercise, whatever it is, go pet your dog, go hug your cat. These are ways to activate oxytocin, which is that feel good hormone, which combats cortisol. So we want to find ways to get these dopamine boosts throughout the day. And I say love because love and gratitude are two of the biggest healers that we have in this world have a gratitude practice. I have notebook after notebook of just gratitude and I practice self-love every day. And I'm somebody who used to hate myself. I'm somebody who used to think I was ugly and fat and stupid and now I love myself. I literally say inside of my head every day, I love myself, I love myself. I look myself in the mirror and I say, I'll thank you, I love you. I know it sounds crazy and I know it might be woo-woo, but do it on a consistent basis and watch it really help regulate your hormones and help you burn fat. Before I get to tip number five here, which is the final tip, and then I have a bonus for you, I have a question for you. Do you have a daily practice of ways to relieve stress, an outlet, if you will? Is it yoga, is it meditation, is it long walks? If you do have a daily practice of some sort of stress reduction, let me know in the comment section down below. And before I get to tip number five, if this video has been helpful, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the Keto Camp YouTube channel if you're getting any value from this video and if you're brand new, welcome. Number five here is going to be, I see this commonly, you're eating too much fat on keto. Yes, if you eat too much fat, you could actually slow down fat loss and even gain fat because when you eat too many fat calories, your body needs to burn calories from that food and it stops burning your own body fat. This is where something like fasting comes into play that could be beneficial because obviously you're not eating and you burn your own body fat. So assess, are you eating too many nuts and seeds? Are you snacking throughout the day? Are you having too much fat on keto? Maybe you're having your Bulletproof coffee. You could cut the two tablespoons of butter and MCT oil cut it in half or just eliminate those fats in your coffee and see what it does for your fat because you have a choice, Keto Camper. You could get your fat calories from that plate of food in front of you or that Bulletproof coffee or you can get it from your butt, your hips, and your thighs. It's your choice. So assess if you're having too much fat and if you feel like you are, cut the fat, maybe even increase the protein and see what it does for your fat loss. The bonus tip for you here is very important. This could be the missing key to why you're not feeling good on keto and you're not losing the weight or you stop losing the weight. Bile, B-I-L-E. Bile is produced from your liver. Your liver is that soccer mom organ who does everything and everything for us. Four and a half pounds right here on your right side of your body of your rib cage and it stimulates bile. Bile is a green substance that acts as a detergent to break down fat soluble vitamins, all the fat that you're eating on keto, bile breaks it down, vitamins A, D, E, and K, and it helps assimilate and distribute it through your body and helps you burn fat and feel good. But if you have sluggish bile, you don't feel good and you have trouble assimilating these fats and it could actually cause some weight gain. Bile also has a detoxification effect downstream to remove toxins and reduce inflammation. All good things, but so many people have sluggish bile. So this is where bitters are better. If you're not having bitters on keto, this could be the missing component for you to break through this weight loss plateau. Bitters are going to be ginger and ginger tea, dandelion greens, dandelion tea, dark chocolate, organic shade grown coffee like Purity Coffee, my favorite coffee in the world, could actually, this is mold-free organic coffee and it could actually help stimulate bile. So if you wanna check them out, go to ketocampcoffee.com, use ketocamp at checkout for 10% off. Also artichokes, apple cider vinegar, lemons and limes, basil, rosemary, thyme, these are all things to introduce and incorporate on your ketogenic lifestyle to stimulate healthy bile production. That is the missing component for so many people. 
If this video has been helpful, smash the thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe to this video and share it with a friend who you think could get value from this video. Another question I get asked, by the way, is how can I increase my energy levels on keto? Doesn't carbohydrates help give me energy? How will I have energy on keto? All right, we're still moving along here. We have two more videos to go before we complete this complete guide to keto mega series. And these next two videos are gonna teach you how to have more energy with keto and then how to practice keto flexing. Before we get to those, let's get to a few questions from you, the Keto Camp community. No Limit Fitness Coaching says calories aren't important. What? Yeah, let's just ignore science. Every study out there shows proof that calories and protein are the only thing important to losing fat. Carbs are not the enemy. All right, let's address that, shall we? I agree, carbs are not the enemy. But focusing on calories is a huge distraction. The body does not have receptor sites for counting calories. And the studies show that counting calories fails 99.99% of the time. I already explained that. So I'm not going to get into a battle with you. If you feel like counting calories works for you and your clients and you're seeing long-term results, go for it. I've been in the space since 2008 and I used to do the counting calories game, the macro manipulation, and it's just a big distraction. What we focus on here at Keto Camp is cellular metabolism and reducing inflammation so your hormones are most more sensitive to burn fat, to produce energy, to teach the mitochondria and ATP to do what it's designed to do and to heal that cell membrane. None of that has anything to do with calories. Do calories matter? Absolutely. Are calories important? No, I don't believe so. Let's get to the next question here. Marie Adams says, don't eat carbs and fat. What about peanut butter? Other nut butters, salads with a dressing like olive oil, avocado oil, some things have fat and carbs naturally. Now, peanut butter is not on my healthy food list. Technically, it's not a nut, it's a legume. But nut butters like almond nut butter, macadamia nut butter, olive oil, avocados, those are fine. What I say, when I say fat, fat and carbs together, I mean carbs that are really going to spike glucose and insulin. Nut butters will not, avocado will not, so those are totally fine together. Next question comes from Krista Wild. I don't understand your point about separating fat on keto. Then people say bone broth is great to break your fast. I only eat during six hours a day, and as a diabetic, I don't wanna eat every two hours during my short eating window so that I can separate all the macros. So same thing what I just answered of the previous question is, when I say separate fat from carbs, carbs that are really going to spike glucose and insulin, not carbs that are low on the glycemic index. So nut butters have some carbs. Nuts and seeds have some carbs. Avocados have some carbs. Those are not carbs that are really going to ramp up glucose. It's those other carbs that we want to avoid. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep healing that diabetes. The body's amazing. You can reverse it for good. Bita says, love all your videos. Can you do keto fasting while breastfeeding? Thanks. I'm so glad you love the videos. And hey, congratulations to you for your new baby. That is amazing. Now, work with a professional for sure. I have seen some individuals do keto while breastfeeding and their milk supply is fine, but then in some cases they could lose the milk supply. So work with a professional. I'm not gonna tell you yes or no, but I am gonna say possibly, but you might wanna work with somebody to help guide you along the way. Before we move on to the final two videos here, I wanna let you know that I'm hosting a free ketosis and intermittent fasting masterclass where I take this entire conversation we're having here today to a deeper level of understanding where we apply a lot of these intermittent fasting strategies. We talk about autophagy. We talk about the history of keto, the history of fasting, and I'm gonna be answering your questions directly. This is a free masterclass on keto. I'm gonna outline my four pillar approach on achieving amazing results with keto and fasting. For anybody who joins this free masterclass, what you're going to get is a link for over $300 worth in digital downloads, all for free. You're going to get a few of my best-selling books, a keto grocery shopping list, some meal plans, a keto smoothie recipe book, and so much more. This masterclass does have a limited capacity to how many people we could get on the server. So what I wanna do is give you an invitation here because you're so dedicated to watching this long, super keto video. Head to ketosismasterclass.com, register your free spot, for the next masterclass coming up, that is ketosismasterclass.com. Now let's get into the final two videos in this super keto video. How does keto give you more energy? If you eliminate your precious carbohydrates, will your energy level suffer? 
In this video, I'm gonna outline how keto helps with your energy levels, how to do it the right way, and how it's a powerful tool for amazing productivity and brain function. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, founder of Keto Camp and the best-selling author of three books. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. If you are stuck as a sugar burner, it will be very difficult to have amazing energy levels without relying on snacking every two to three hours, having your snacks nearby because if you go too long, God forbid, your energy levels suffer. But when you transition into ketosis, all of a sudden, you've flipped the switch and you have amazing energy levels. How does this all work? Let's talk a little bit about the metabolism. First of all, there is no such thing as a fast metabolism or a slow metabolism. There's only efficient or inefficient. When you do keto the right way, the way that I'm teaching you in this 10-part series playlist here on the YouTube channel, when you do it the right way, you achieve metabolic freedom. How does that sound? How, how about if you could go the whole day without eating food and have amazing energy levels and feel good and be mentally sharp and focused? Well, when you do keto the right way, that's the way it works. Here's the deal. When we are sugar burning and eating every two to three hours and eating carbohydrates, it creates a lot of cellular smoke and we teach this body to be metabolically inflexible, meaning if we go more than three hours without a carb hit, the brain starts to get a reduction in glucose and the body panics, energy levels drop, and all of a sudden, we are scrambling for carbohydrates. The brain is sending the body intense signals and cravings to find carbs, to find sugar. And then you have the sugar, you have the carbs, you feel good short term, glucose goes up, insulin follows, and then it drops dramatically. And then you're on just roller coaster of energy levels. It's not fun. When I was a snackaholic, a carbaholic, when I was a sugar burner myself, I was on this roller coaster ride for 23 years, and it is not fun. Here's how it works when you transition into ketosis. Now all of a sudden, you burn through your sugar reserves, which is called your glycogen stores, which is about 2,000 calories stored in your liver, in your muscle, and the brain starts to switch to a new fuel source called ketones. Ketones actually fuel the brain much better than glucose. Why do I say that? When, when you think about babies, did you know that babies that are breastfed go in and out of ketosis? Because breast milk has saturated fat and cholesterol and it helps the development of that baby's brain. The brain is 70% to 80% fat. It loves fat. Your submembranes are made up of fat. So ketones are a powerful fuel source. You see my shirt here, ketosis on baby, and I have a rocket right there because when you are in ketosis, your energy levels are skyrocketing and your body's now burning your own body fat. And now your liver is producing ketones so your brain can function optimally. That means you don't even have to eat food. And if you do, eat keto foods for sure. But if you don't, like if you're fasting throughout the day, your body's burning your own fat and you have this freedom to not have to worry about food and the ketones are giving you rock solid mental clarity, energy, and focus, and you're gonna be the most productive you've ever been in your life. And I'm speaking from experience here. So that's how ketones give you energy. It is a powerful fuel source. Therefore, keto is not a diet. Keto is a metabolic state. It's a metabolic process. We are hardwired to go through periods of time in ketosis and out of ketosis. Every single one of our ancestors did keto. So it's not a fad, it is not a trend, it is not gonna go away in a few years because it's been around for 2.5 million years. We are hardwired this way. How do you know if you've achieved this ketosis, if you've got this metabolic freedom? Well, you skip a meal and you see how you feel. If you skip that meal and you feel amazing, you have peak energy levels, that's a sign you've done it the right way and you've achieved this metabolic flexibility. That is the ultimate goal here. If it's the opposite and you skip a meal and you don't feel good, then you gotta kind of revisit the principles of keto, go watch this entire 10 part series and do it the right way. But that's how keto provides you with energy. You're getting your energy from your own body fat. Your body's burning your body fat, all good things, and your liver is producing ketones to fuel the brain. So if you're worried about where you are going to get your energy from when you're doing keto and you eliminate the carbs, I hope this clears it all up for you. I have a question for you. When you transitioned and did keto, assuming that you are doing keto now, did you notice your energy levels 
increase and are those energy levels stable throughout the day? On a scale of one to 10, how are your energy levels on keto? 10 meaning rock star ketosis status, one meaning not really good. What is your level on a scale of one to 10 of energy on keto? Let me know in the comment section down below. We have one more to go, one more to go. So grateful you're still with me. Let's get to a few questions in the Keto Camp community before we get to the final video in this super video. Carol Jubert says, sleep. So many testify that sleep is better with more carbs, especially at nighttime. Yeah, Carol. So what happens is if when you're transitioning from being a sugar burner to a fat burner, the initial 14 to 21 days might it might help you to have a little bit of some carbs right before bed. And when I say that, I mean raw organic honey could do the trick for you in the beginning stages as you're getting more fat adapted. So one to two teaspoons of raw honey before bed might do wonders for you. Renee Campo says, what if you don't have much fat on your body? Well, then what you can do is prioritize protein and make sure you actually are assimilating those fats spoke about earlier. So taking some digestive enzymes, prioritizing protein, that could be good for you. Jane Doe says, starting keto and fasting six weeks ago. Just starting to see a glimmer of energy. I've had energy, 51 years old, female, very obese. Jane, I'm so glad you're starting to notice the energy as your cells become more efficient at helping the mitochondria produce ATP, which is the gasoline of your cell. You're going to have more energy. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep reducing inflammation and keep healing. And I'm excited for your future results. Next question is from Kevin Amat. I think my energy ranges from six to eight, depending on how well I've slept during the night. The biggest change I noticed was the rings on my Apple Watch. Before keto, I rarely close them. Now I close them every day without doing any extra exercises. I just started Dr. Will Cole's elimination diet, finding foods that cause my inflammation. Kevin, I love it. I love that you are researching this information and applying that information. The fact that your rings are fitting better, that's a good sign right there, and yes, Sleep is crucial for energy, so keep doing what you're doing. Keep healing your body. Let's get into the final video in this 10-part series on three ways to practice keto flexing. These are three easy tips for long-term keto results. Let's do this. How long should you stay in ketosis? Is the keto diet something that you could follow long-term? Or are there side effects to staying in ketosis long-term? In this video, I'm gonna teach you three methods to follow keto for long-term results. I'm also gonna explain why we don't wanna stay in ketosis too long. Let's do this. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. This is video 10 of 10 of my keto series. What we learned so far in this 10 video series is the difference between clean keto and dirty keto, the right keto fats to have on your ketogenic lifestyle, how keto helps with energy levels, why your cholesterol might go up on keto and what to pay attention to with those lab markers, how keto helps with weight loss, and so much more. So if you haven't watched those videos, you can check them out. We'll put a link for it down below. But in this video, we're gonna talk about Three simple ways for you to master keto and intermittent fasting, because many of you who do keto do fasting, which is the right approach. So let's get right into this. When it comes to getting results, not just with keto, but with anything you do, variation is key. Think about personal trainers and fitness coaches, the world class out there, like GC3 Fitness, shout out to him. What do they do for their clients? They change up the routine so the body could guess and continue getting results. If you do the same workout over and over and over and over again, what will happen? You'll stop getting the results. It's the same thing with keto. So our cells, the human body has 70 trillion cells that we're made of, and they're hardwired for feast, famine, cycling. So when I say feasting, that means getting out of ketosis. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to do it the right way. And famine means fasting, being in ketosis. We're designed this way. We are hardwired for the old school. The body has two pathways, mTOR and autophagy. These are opposing pathways. It's very important to understand this. mTOR, which stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin, stands for growth, anabolic. So think of a bodybuilder, think of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It is building up muscle, building up tissues in your body. It could be very healing in spurts from time to time, but if you're always an mTOR, you're gonna age faster and probably develop 
disease. That's not good. So somebody who is not doing keto and eating all the time, they're getting mTOR all the time, not good. Somebody who's doing keto all the time and doing a lot of fasting, you're getting something called autophagy. Autophagy is cellular repair, cellular cleanup. It's catabolic, but in a good way. Your body is so stinking smart. When you fast, when you get into ketosis, you activate this innate intelligence that starts cleaning out the trash, cleaning out the junk, which is called autophagy. Now you might be asking, don't we want that all the time? The answer is no, because once your body is done cleaning out the bad stuff, it's going to need energy from somewhere, so it'll go for the good stuff. It could weaken your immune system. It could create muscle loss. Not good. The key here is in the variation in this delicate dance and balance between the mTOR and the autophagy. Variation is key, because when you go back and forth, you create adaptation in the body. And I want you to write this down. When you force adaptation in your body, when you create a change, good cells get stronger, bad cells do not adapt. Meaning your mitochondria that are good become even better and burn more fat. Your mitochondria that are damaged, your body gets rid of them. Your body gets rid of damaged cells. When you force adaptation, so variation is key here. So when you stick with ketosis for too long, you're not getting this variation. Your body could actually start losing results. As a matter of fact, there are two major problems with staying in ketosis for too long. Let's get right into that. Here are the two problems that will occur if you're in ketosis for too long. Number one, the thyroid can begin to dysfunction. Why, you might ask? Well, T4, which is the inactive form of thyroid, needs to be converted to T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. T3 is super important because every cell has a receptor site for the T3 thyroid hormone. That means it's so important because every cell needs that T3 hormone. T3 hormone helps you burn fat, helps your cells produce energy so you feel good. What makes this conversion, you might ask? Insulin, the gut, the liver. Insulin is a major component to helping out with this T4 to T3 conversion. So I think it's great to keep insulin low but there are many benefits to having an insulin spike from time to time, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that later on in the video with the keto flexing method, but when you're not getting any insulin, when you're chronically low insulin by doing ketosis for too long, this conversion does not happen efficiently, so the thyroid can begin to dysfunction, leading to a hypothyroid, leading to you not feeling as good, and the reason you won't feel good on keto, and the reason your results will stop, is because this conversion is starting to malfunction as well. So when you intentionally have what I call a keto flex day, it'll help make that conversion. That's the first problem with staying in ketosis for too long. The second issue with staying in ketosis for too long is you're going to actually slow down weight loss and you actually could store more fat. What? I could store fat just by being strict with ketosis? Sounds crazy, but here is the analogy that's gonna help make a lot of sense for you. Imagine it's the summertime, and you know, winter is rolling around the corner. It's gonna be a cold three or four months of winter. So it's the summer and you're storing firewood to get ready for winter so you could burn that firewood and help get through the cold winter months. Let's say you stored about 20 logs of firewood and winter now approaches. You have three to four months to preserve those 20 logs of firewood. How motivated are you going to be to burn that firewood? You're, you're not, you're gonna burn it as slow as possible so you could preserve it and get through the cold winter months. Well, guess what? That's like your body fat, the 20 logs of fire. When you've only taught your body to burn fat and only fat and stay in ketosis for too long, your body's actually going to preserve its fuel source because the number one priority for the body is survival. So if you've taught it only to burn one fuel source, which is ketones, it will want to preserve that fuel source. But here's what happens when you have a keto flex day. I'm gonna give you three options here on how to do a keto flex day. But here's what happens. It's like your buddy coming over and saying, oh, you only have 20 logs of firewood. Here's an additional 200 logs of firewood. Now you have 220 logs of firewood. You're gonna be inspired and motivated to burn that firewood. That's what happens when you have a keto flex day. Your body, it reminds the body it's not starving and then it helps ramp up fat burning. And if you've done it the right way, if you build up this machinery the right way, you should be able to go right back into ketosis within 48 hours after a keto flex day. 
So I know what you're wondering right now. Okay, Ben, what is a keto flex day? Let's get into three ways to practice keto flexing. Oh, and before I do, please hit the thumbs up button on this video if you've gotten any value so far. And if you're brand new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with the bell. I'll be releasing a brand new book in the future called Keto Flexing, and I'm gonna have different variations on how to practice keto flexing, but here are three methods that will make all the difference for you depending on where you are with your weight loss goals. So number one, we have the 5-1-1 rule. I'm gonna outline that shortly, but this is great for somebody who wants to maintain their current weight. Maybe you already achieved the weight loss you wanted to achieve, or maybe you just have about a few pounds to lose. Then there's the 4-2-1 rule for somebody who has 5 to 15 pounds of extra body fat they want to lose. And the 3-3-1 rule for somebody who has 15 or more extra pounds of fat loss they want to lose. So let's get into all three. First of all, I want to give credit to my mentor and my coach, Dr. Daniel Pampa, author of Beyond Fasting, who actually helped me outline these rules. He has them all in his book, Beyond Fasting. So the first rule is the 5-1-1 rule. This means it's a, it's a weekly rule, so seven days out of the week, you're gonna practice this. Five days out of the week, you're gonna practice intermittent fasting, an 18-6 schedule, meaning 18 hours fasted, six hours feasting. You're going to have two meals within your six-hour eating window. For example, 12 to 6 p.m. is your eating window. Have two meals that are keto-friendly. You wanna make sure your carbohydrates equal less than 50 grams total for the day, so you are in ketosis for those five days. Then we have one day out of the week where you're doing a 24-hour fast, just water and sea salt. You're going dinner to dinner or lunch to lunch, either way works, but you're getting more of this autophagy and even more of your body burning your fat cells. So you do that for one day, and then you have a keto flex day. This is where it might sound counterintuitive, but the magic happens here. One day is your feast day, your flex day. It could be a Saturday or Sunday, whatever day you wanna make it, but you're going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's right, you're not gonna do much fasting. You're gonna consume 100 to 200 grams of healthy carbohydrates. You could also have more protein on this day, and the goal here is to keep your fat lower. The goal on this day is to activate mTOR, that growth pathway, and to get that insulin spike to help certain hormonal conversions, the main one being that thyroid T4 to T3. So 100 to 200 grams of healthy carbohydrates. And if you're wondering, okay, Ben, what are healthy carbohydrates? I'm going to have an answer for you later. Stick around. Then we have the 4 to 1 rule. This is great for somebody who has 5 to 15 pounds of extra fat they want to lose. Four days out of the week, you're doing intermittent fasting. You're doing that 18-6 schedule, same as the 5 one one rule that I just outlined. You're eating less than 50 grams of total carbs. So you're in ketosis for these four days, having two meals in that six-hour eating window. Then you're doing a 48-hour water fast. Fast. That's the two day fast. You're just having water and sea salt. You're going to get more autophagy and more fat loss. And that final day, same rules apply. It's that keto flex day, 100 to 200 grams of healthy carbs, more protein, lower fat. That's the 4 to 1 rule. And then we have the 3 3 1 rule. This is great for somebody who has 15 or more pounds to lose, whether it's 50 pounds, 100 pounds, or even more. This is a great rule to follow. Three days, you're going to practice intermittent fasting, an 18-6 schedule. Same rules apply. Two meals, you're going to make sure those meals actually are less than 20 grams of total carbs. So you're going even a little bit more strict to force your mitochondria to choose fat for fuel. So less than 20 grams total each day. Then you're doing a three-day water fast, 72 hours. Take caution with that. You got to know what you're doing. Maybe work with somebody who knows how to coach you through that. But a three-day water fast, you're going to get max autophagy, you're gonna get more fat loss and you're gonna get more results. But then we wanna balance that with an mTOR day, with an anabolic day, with that insulin spike, which is a keto flex day. Same rules apply, 100 to 200 grams of healthy carbs. There is a caveat here for the flex days. If you still have insulin resistance, type two diabetes, then I actually don't recommend having 100 to 200 grams of carbohydrates on that flex day. I recommend keeping the carbs low, below 50, but increasing your protein on that day. You still have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I have a lot more protein because protein will help you still get that mTOR and make that balance between autophagy and mTOR. Before I get to what are healthy carbohydrates for the flex days, I have a question for you, which is the question of the day. How long have you been in ketosis? Has it been weeks, days? Has it been months or years? Let me know down below. I'd like to see how long you've been in there and maybe it's time for you to practice one of these rules. So I have put together a guide for you called the Keto Camp Blueprint. 
This is a guide that I usually sell for almost $300, but I'm gonna give it to you for free here for watching the entire video and watching this entire playlist. In the guide, you're gonna see healthy carbohydrates for your keto flex day. Not only that, you're gonna see the best ways to cook your foods on keto, the worst ways to cook your foods on keto, healthy keto fats, healthy keto proteins, and the worst out there on keto. So we make sure we avoid those. So this is an aisle by aisle document for you to take to your grocery store and get these healing keto foods. So go to ketocampblueprint.com to get this for free. It's a free digital download for you. Or you can head to the link down below, ketocampblueprint.com and claim that today. What a journey. What an amazing time we've had together so far. I want to acknowledge you for making it to this point of the video. I'm still going to get to a few questions here, but kudos to you. I love that you're still here. That shows how dedicated you are to learning about ketosis. So let's jump right into those questions. Marielsi Avila says, when is your Keto Flux book coming out? If you do dinner to dinner 24 hours, you basically eat every night, every day, right? Thank you. Appreciate your videos. The book is out right now. If you want to get the book Keto Flex, it's 311 pages of Keto Gold, uh, forward by Dr. Daniel Pampa, endorsed by Thomas DeLauer, Dr. Jason Fung, Dr. Ben Bickman, Dr. Mindy Peltz, and so many other incredible leaders. So if you go to ketoflexbook.com, it's available right now on paperback and Kindle, and shortly it'll be available on Audible. Yes, doing dinner to dinner would be one meal a day to answer your question, yes. Angela says, question on 331, you don't eat for three days or fast 24 hours three times? You could do it either way. If you wanna get the most benefits, that three in the 331 is a 72 hour water fast. So you don't typically eat for those 72 hours. If that's too much of a challenge, you could do three 24 hour water fast. It's your call. Line H says, oh, I have both problems. The doctor just put me on medicine for T4 and T3. They are so low. I have done intermittent fasting and keto for more than 18 months. Wow, well, I hope, I'm glad that resonated with you. The keto flexing, getting that insulin spike in a healthy way, could help those hormonal conversions, one of them being T4 thyroid to T3, like you just learned. Keep me posted, I hope you're able to heal that thyroid with keto flexing. Michelle says, does the three-day fasting have to be in a row? Yeah, so I just explained, it could be three days in a row for the most results, but it doesn't have to be. You could split it up to three 24-hour fasts and you can mix that up with your schedule. K Tooley says, this is my month four, but the first time I've heard about keto flexing. I have insulin resistance, I believe. I have plateaus a few times. I think I'll try this, so more protein. Is the 331 meant to be every week? I'm glad you just heard about Keto Flex. Yes, do it with more protein if you still have insulin resistance. In my book, I talk about different strategies for Keto Flexing. The 331 can be done every week. I wouldn't do it for months, but maybe for the next one to two months, you should see tremendous benefits from that schedule. Bernie Williams says, 30 days and I have 50 pounds to go. I'm excited to try Keto Flexing, but I don't believe I'm insulin resistant. Can keto flexing be done for a lifetime? Yeah, Bernie, well, congrats to you, and I hope you're almost at that goal weight. Yes, keto flex is exactly how to do this for the rest of your life, and you could customize it and curtail it however you like. In the book, chapter 10 of Keto Flex, I have different variations on how to do it, and in the upcoming keto masterclass that I invited you to, I'm gonna go deep dive into those keto flexing protocols. Reminder, if you wanna get reserved for that, that's ketosismasterclass.com. Sabrina says, how long is staying in ketosis for too long? The way that I teach it in my book, Keto Flex, is 60 days, strict ketosis, that's six zero days of strict ketosis, and then we start practicing keto flexing. So I think anything longer than 60 to 90 days might be too long in ketosis. Give yourself a round of applause. You are committed to your health, to your future, to your longevity. You made it this far. Let me know down below. I wanna know who actually made it to the end and I want you to put hashtag mega video ending so I could see who actually made it to the end here. But hey, we're not done yet. I wanna invite you again to my upcoming keto masterclass where I'm going to teach you my four pillar approach to keto, but also intermittent fasting. You can register for that right now by heading to ketosismasterclass.com or going to the link down below. It's completely free and you get a lot of free gifts when you sign up and join that live webinar. And what I want you to check out now as you transition away from this video, I outlined 15 key things you must know about keto 
This is gonna really give you more of the science behind ketosis. And you can watch that video by sticker tapping the screen right there. These are amazing tips for keto to take your results to a pro level. Sticker tap that video right there. I'll see you in there and thank you so much for watching this entire super keto video.